Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're live, my friends. I literally just jumped in my chair seconds ago, busy working on news developments uh, during the break. Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, with a lot of key-breaking analysis and news, is going to join us at the bottom of the next hour, into the bottom of the next hour. So the bottom of the second hour into the uh, bottom of the third hour. And then Tosh Plumley now being contacted by the Department of Defense for his radio interviews here is going to be joining us. Of course, he has the sources in NATO and DOD as well as the DEA on what really happened in Benghazi. And I don't just believe Tosh Plumley, congressional whistleblower, he's famous uh, for the church hearings and then Iran-Contra. I don't just believe him. I separately from all my sources have confirmed what he's saying, but it's a whole other level now when the DOD is contacting him and trying to censor his Facebook and things. Uh, and they want to know. They're telling him, who told you this? Talk about treason. The entire DOD, anybody uh, who's got a secret clearance uh, in the areas of the Middle East, or especially top secret, knows exactly what happened. There were predator drones overhead, seven and a half hours stand down, the execution of the ambassador, the help being blocked, and I'm telling you, this is a big deal. I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell you that. You know that. It's just that it, it hits me what a crazy world we're living in, a really crazy world. So that's Julie Wilson's article, former CIA whistleblower targeted by government for Facebook post. She put that out... Uh, Monday night, and then we got a hold of Tosh yesterday and got him coming on the show for about 10 minutes just to give us an update at the bottom of the last hour. Uh, that said, I just had one of those double take moments right as I got in here to cover the news where the, the fraud, the wall of corruption and deception and outright lies is so mega massive that I'm really having trouble even forming words at this point. Obviously, we're going to get into the maneuvering of the United States down the road into a default and into a pure beggar nation to the uh, offshore banking cartels that have been maneuvering us towards the rocks the entire time on record. When I first woke up 20 years ago, this is what all of the uh, patriots were saying and documenting. This is what they wrote about in 1972 before I was born in None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen. I can't believe Gary Allen's son runs Politico and puts out all that anti-liberty disinfo. It'd be like if my son grew up and joined the dark side. I, I, I just, Gary Allen is such a legend for what he did. Would none dare call a conspiracy. It's got to be like 10 million copies out in print. We would have lost by now if it wasn't for that book. I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now. And he never knew writing that book that that would happen. And then it would have woken up tens of millions of people. We sell the book, by the way, at InfoWarsStore.com. It's not really a plug, but it's there if you want it. And everything came true in that book. 90% of it. I mean, we're 90% there. And if the book hadn't been there and other, the John Birch Society and other people, we would already be completely down the rat hole of horrible, conscious authoritarians who want to wreck society and make us poor so they can control us. And I just, I'm beyond angry about that. When I see poverty and I see dumbed down people and I see all the problems happening, and humans have problems naturally anyways, but to have the system trying to make things as bad as possible and then running businesses over all the problems to like capitalize on it, problem, reaction, solution, it just makes me sick. In fact, I can't even listen to Obama's voice now or look at him. And I know he's a puppet, but he, he symbolizes everything. You know, he's the ass end of the New World Order crapping all over us, and I'm just sick of it. Excuse me talking like that. There's just no other word to describe it. I mean, I just, if there was another country quasi-free I could run to, I, I, I would get out of here and break my promise not abandon ship. But I tell you, it's world government. There's no escaping it. We stand, we fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live broadcasting worldwide from the resistance, Texas. Going out worldwide, reminding folks what made America great. God, guns, and guts.
and we are here in defiance of all the tyranny absolutely in its face pointing out what a group of disgusting criminals they are oh i love the drudge report i love how drudge can put things like nobody else so simply yelling to run the world that's the headline the new fed chief after the genius larry summers uh, who helped engineer the collapse uh, the end of glass steagall the derivative scam they were so arrogant they tried to run him, kind of like they wanted Kissinger for the whitewasher over the 9-11 commission when he was involved in 9-11, clearly. Well, uh, now they've removed him, and it's a woman. So if you're against hyperinflation in Weimar Republic, well, then you're, you're obviously a, a, a anti-woman. I mean, you're obviously a racist. You're obviously not trendy. Uh, but it actually says rejoice. Look at the headline. Rejoice! The Yellen Fed will print money forever to create jobs. That's a quote, ladies and gentlemen. That's out of the Telegraph. Rejoice. They're going to just accelerate the printing presses and give the money first to the insiders so they get first use of it and then hand us all of the devalued currencies and the hyperinflation. But don't worry, they've got a plan. Oh, yes, this lovely lady, she's got a plan. She was going to meet with the boys in the band to continue quoting the song. She's got a plan, the same plan the New World Order's always had. They've done in hundreds of countries in the last century, sometimes every few decades, like in Mexico and Brazil and Nigeria. Over and over and over again, they get you into artificial debt, sign you onto derivatives, uh, bring in Western IMF World Bank money that's then paid back to IMF World Bank controlling interest, never hitting the people of the country. And then the nation goes deeper into deeper in debt, and then they can bring in social engineering for more financing, more fiat money that they just pull out of their hat. They actually pull it out of somewhere else. They pull it out of our future. So they say rejoice, rejoice. But it's important, and they say this, that they want to depress the economy while they hyperinflate. So you get hyperstag inflation, a term I coined about six years ago that top economists have agreed is a good name for it. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts says that that's a good term for it. And it is hyper stag inflation, not not stagflation. They said was impossible until the 70s because it's totally artificial, even under the Keynesian model. But hyper stag inflation, rape inflation, fraud inflation, total upside down two plus two, common core equals five inflation. By the way, you saw that under federal funding in Arkansas, they're teaching kids the Constitution's bad, and they have them to practice rewriting it for the uh, NDAA and Homeland Security and the Patriot Act. It actually says that. Well, we thought we would really take the nanny state to the next level. My dad had an idea, and then I kind of augmented it a bit, and uh, we're going to uh, tell you about it. The ultimate in the nanny state right here in Austin, Texas, a enclave of... Uh, trendiness and mental illness and low IQs, we, we go to the trendy enclaves and there's nothing they won't sign. We have actually uh, topped Mark Dice and, uh, and the, the Californian idiots. We now, ladies and gentlemen, have found 14 out of 20 people, 14 out of 20 people they talk to, doesn't take long to do this, have now signed a petition. Well, I'm going to have to tell you when we air it, when we premiere it in T minus 57 minutes. When we come in at the eight after next hour, in that second segment, when we come in there where a lot of stations join us, we're going to premiere the ultimate nanny state dream. By the way, it's it's now moved into archive, featured archive, where people can click top stories, and it's 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 there at infowars.com and prisonblotter.com. Will you print me a Don Salazar's article that went out last night? He works so hard. Sometimes it's like 8 at night, but then the problem is it goes out then and nobody reads it, uh, about how Spain is moving to tax the sun. And, and I told people the EU was already having hearings three years ago to tax the sun. So they're just adopting. There it is. Spain considers taxing the sun. Well, well, they're not considering it. They're, they're moving to, to do it. <laughs> but uh, how solar panels became toxic assets. And uh, that's the answer. Massive taxes on anybody that's independent. Take here in Central Texas, under the trendy rule of the authoritarian uh, hipsters. They will harass you and, and, and go after you and, and fight you if you try to put your own off-the-grid solar panels in. It's not a problem in Hayes County or other counties that aren't in the Travis County New World Order Control Gen 21 zone on record. 
but they basically won't permit you to have your own solar panels. You've got to have them the type they want with kickbacks to their insider friends. You got to buy it from certain companies, and then it's got to be hooked into the power grid. You got to be hooked into the matrix. By the way, the head of Google, Schmidt, has come out and said, you know, Google Glasses are the next stage towards implanting stuff in your brain, but that's a little creepy right now. We're trying to develop less invasive technology, but that's coming. And as long as you have a Vogue photo shoot showing some trendies, uh, you know, men with big handlebar mustaches on, on, on leashes with trendy women controlling them, that's the new trendy thing, as long as, as long as that's the case, I mean, they will take the brain chip. So nothing against folks with handlebar mustaches. But I mean, my whole thing is I read an article about all over the country, they're electing hipsters as mayors. Just as long as you have a handlebar mustache and wear two different color socks and, and waddle around, you're going to have supermodels on both arms if you can't talk. Because they've taught women that you're successful if you have a guy who can't talk but acts really trendy. And then, of course, really the women aren't successful and it doesn't fulfill them. But it doesn't matter. By then, they're already wrecked. And they think, well, if I've missed him more trendy and do more of what the trendy say, then I'll be fulfilled. And then, of course, your life just gets worse and worse and worse. You would be fulfilled when you became red-blooded and primitive again. That's when you'll become fulfilled. When you go and run around in the woods at night, foaming at the mouth. I'm joking. The point is, is that... That's what's going to fulfill you is getting back to your instincts, getting back to your humanity, getting back to the fulfillment of not being afraid. If you buy into the popular culture, you might as well stick a shotgun in your mouth and pull the trigger in slow motion because that's psychologically, spiritually, intellectually, culturally what you're doing to yourself. And I'm sorry, it's just that I'm realizing I've got to declare war on establishment trendiness. Do you know what establishment trendiness is? I'll use an example of this I've used many times, but then elaborate on it. In every culture, whether it was the Aztecs or whether it was the ancient Chinese or whether it was the ancient Babylonians or whether it was even the ancient Romans, technocrats, manipulators, con artists, emperors, new clothes type operators would come in and say, listen, you're the emperor of China. You can't be seen by the public. You're too important. You have to live behind this walled city. And by the way, you can't feed yourself. You've got to have foot-long fingernails because that shows you're totally elitist and we're going to worship you as God. And by the way, your women shouldn't be able to walk. They need to be carried. And to make sure they don't walk, by the way, it'll get them off your back, Emperor. We're going to bind their feet at birth so they can't even walk. And then later, how about we teach your women to not be able to talk and just keep them locked up in a pit? Because that's what elitists do. And under style, women couldn't walk, the men couldn't walk half the time. They had, you know, foot-long, two-foot-long fingernails and were just mental patients from birth back there, convinced they were God with the power behind the throne, the, the imperial class bowing to them and, and like, you know, like bees visiting the queen bee in her chamber, but literally laughing at them behind the scenes, running giant armies and takeover operations and building huge walls and siege machines and creating bioweapon programs against their enemies. The Chinese first did that. Everything else, very high level of science. And, and they wrote books talking about how ridiculous the emperors were and how they'd controlled them and how, 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 you, how you needed to continue to control future imperial dynasties. And then the power behind the throne became the real emperors. And then they would hereditarily hand down the power. I mean, the parallel would be the stewards of Gondor uh, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy who actually become the king and say, I don't want the king to return. I am in control. Now take me to the tower and burn me with my sons. I mean, that's the type of stuff we're dealing with here. And that's what trendiness and fashion and all the rest of it is. If you like a fashion, go with it. If you like it. If you're into something, that's fine. If you like tattoos all over your body, great. If you like handlebar mustaches, that's great. The point is, is that... People literally, at least where I live, are just everywhere. And, and, and I tell them, I go, go to areas where you see handlebar mustaches and women in charge, and they will sign anything. You can go up to them and say, we want to kill all conservatives. They sign the thing. We want to put all gun owners in FEMA camps. They sign the thing. Today we went to them, or yesterday we went to them. We're going to air it today. And, and, and it's unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. We have the holy grail of trendy idiocy. <laughs>
and we have an endless mine of them that we can go visit with. And listen, when you start talking to these people, they don't know what planet they're on. You understand that they have no job when they get out of college. They Most of them are already out of college, you know, working at the gas station. Nothing against that. But the point is, so because they're failing, they're buying more into whatever the trendy culture says. And they think the trendy culture is counterculture. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you, these people are the most servile, pathetic jellyfish the planet has ever produced. And this is the New World Order's triumph of mind control. But first, the government shutdown, moving towards a default, banker occupation, and more. Freedom came my day. One day I love you, Obama. I'm going to stop screwing around. Totally ridiculous. I should be a little more serious here today, shouldn't I? It's just the video we've got coming up in the next hour and the audio. Don't worry, radio listeners, by the middle of the next hour, I'll we'll have it posted on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com as well. And I don't usually do a lot of surprises, but this is, and I shouldn't be celebrating the ignorance of trendies and Obama supporters, but as a mass of kleptocrats, they work to enslave everyone, including themselves, because it makes them feel powerful in their feeble little brains through the structure. So I should be crying over the video we're going to be airing uh, coming up. In fact, I should be crying. In fact, I think that's why I'm laughing is it's, 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 it's gallows humor because it freaks me out that I knew when we sent our reporters out on the street this would happen. But let's shift gears on the really serious issues until then. Uh, here is the London Telegraph headline. Rejoice! The Yellen Fed will print money forever to create jobs. We don't need any stinking factories. We don't need any stinking service. We just print money. How's that working out for the average person out there? Well, it works out good for the banksters, the banksteristas. The terroristas. We now know where we stand. Janet Yellen is to take over the U.S. Federal Reserve, which is not federal. Just everything's a fraud. Foreign bank. The world's monetary hegemon. The master of all our lives. <laughs> just in our face. There it is. Aren't we all just slaves to central bankers, as CNBC says? The answer is yes. They know best. The Fed will be looser or longer. That's right, with our credit and our future, the FOMC will continue to print money until the U.S. economy creates enough jobs to reignite wage pressures and inflation, regardless of asset bubbles or collateral damage along the way. No Fed chief in history has ever been better qualified. She is a glaring contrast to Alan Greenspan a political speechwriter for Richard Nixon who never earned a real PhD. It was honorary or pens, an economic paper of depth. She has pedigree. Her husband is Nobel laureate George Eckerloff, the scourge of efficient markets theory. She co-authored Market for Lemons, the paper that won the prize. Currently vice chairman of the Fed, she was the junior governor from 94 to 07 under Greenspan and then president of the San Francisco Fed from 04 to 010. She was head of Clinton's Council of Economic Advisors when she headed Asia crisis. You could hardly find a safer pair of hands. And they just go on with the sarcastic uh, piece. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? Trendy, That's what I trendy. want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just all right. counting on the fact That's that there's a Bernanke pot? And, and this was life under them where they engineered the economic system, they created the derivatives, they're shutting the economy down, they're shutting the power plants down, they're controlling China that has all these hidden tariffs against us as we compete with the slave trade. They are engineering the collapse and in their own white papers admitting it, not just Cloward and Piven, but dozens of them. Cass Sunstein admits that they're waging war against the people and trying to divide and conquer us and that... MSNBC is there to create racial division. I mean, that's how dumb they think you are. They operate in plain view with their takeover while the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center do news articles every week saying I'm insane and the Federal Reserve is federal and that there's no new world order and there's no big central banks doing it and that it's racist to say so and that world government doesn't exist as they announce world government.
It's a cult. I had the host of ABC Nightly News here like four years ago. I guess three years ago. We went out to dinner afterwards, and he's like, basically admitted he knew I was right. But while he was here, I would say, here's all these world leaders saying world government. And he goes, oh, those are world government that's different than yours. And I said, really? So see, that's how this works. Of course, they all know they're just mercenaries. But mercenaries on a sinking ship? Do we have any self-preservation skills? The big news coming up after this break. I'm Alex Jones, the evil one. By the way, you notice that at national parks like Yellowstone and others, they, they come up with guns drawn and, and pull people off tour buses that drive in. Foreigners freak out and think they're in Nazi Germany. The papers are reporting. They uh, go into hotels announcing lockdown and say you're not allowed to leave. You can either still pay for your stay, even though you paid to enter the park and paid your hotel, or you can stay in the building. But you're not allowed to even get off the bus uh, and take photographs. You're not allowed to park on the side of the road outside Mount Rushmore and take photos. Uh, we are in charge now. And this happens everywhere. You go to any national seashore, they will march up to you, get in your face over and over again, and look at you with total hatred. It's happened to me personally. Unbelievable. It happened to me when I was in Big Bend earlier this year. Man, it's so beautiful there in the winter. I could live there. It was just awesome. No cell phone reception, no nothing. I'd have to go up to the very top of a mountain to be able to upload YouTube videos. <laughs> I'd have to hike up to the top of a mountain, spend hours up there uploading videos I'd shot uh, for the few days I'd been there. And I would do stuff like be driving down the road and see a park ranger standing by, an armed park ranger standing by their vehicle. And I would, as a test, I'd say, okay, let's wave and smile. And the guy would just sit there bugging his eyes out literally just with pure rage. And then I ran into other people who were at these natural hot springs around the border and they, they were talking about that very guy and how they'd asked him for directions and he'd been rude to them. I mean, it's just crazy, just crazed people in uniforms running around. You watch old movies with Errol Flynn, like Robin Hood, that's actually based on a true story loosely. And you wonder how they could come shake everybody down and how they could be so abusive and how they could rape people's daughters and how they could. That's what happens in every country where you get a big out of control government that hires people that think they're God. And we're not completely there yet, but we're going there very quickly. I mean, you pull into one town, it's nice, friendly, helpful police that are gentlemanly and honorable. Uh, and then you pull into the next town, it's like boss hog hell. And it's all who runs things from the top down, the, the fish will rot from the head down. And the globalists run America, they run the federal government, they've captured the federal government, and now they run most counties and cities and most states. Yeah, in fact, there's my video, Big Ben Police State Visitors Not Welcome. But my point is John Bown, uh, one of the nightly news producers, driving into work today saw one of the new giant wheeled Homeland Security bomb-proof armored vehicles they delivered 7,000 plus this year alone to departments. And I guess Travis County got its uh, vehicle. Dallas, they were saying, got, what, 14 of them? To, quote, chase criminals. Oh, yes. No, they're gearing up, and the training manuals say it, for war with who? The gun owners, the conservatives, the in the fetters, the libertarians. The returning veterans are number one, of course. They list Ron Paul in these federal training manuals. The Army manual says the founding fathers, including George Washington, would not be welcome in today's military. And that's a litmus test to see if you complain, they mark you down to be deployed to heavy combat zones, to be given extra vaccines, literally. Of course, the guy doing it doesn't know that, but you're put in a database, you, you take the test by computer, and it tells you to sign off and check off on these computer files that you've read the manual. And it's all conditioning. Just like the Common Core uh, federal programs on computers, even down to kindergartners now, really starts at about third grade with the heavy reading. Uh, it's been in the news, has you sign off that you agree that it's good for Bobby to have two daddies. You agree that uh, mommy shouldn't yell at you. Uh, you know that you know it's 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 bad to tell somebody if if mommy if mommy's smoking marijuana. Everything turns into a brainwashing tool. I mean, we're already there. They're already banned dodgeball and tag. Now they're banning bringing footballs to pass at lunch or at recess. Now they're banning walking. 
and, and, and uh, jogging uh, at uh, many uh, recess areas. I saw that a few years ago. The feds are pushing that where you have to sit down at recess on benches. You're not even allowed to walk except to the bench and then back. That is beyond supermax. In a supermax, I guess once a week they let you out into a little common area to walk in circles if you want. Then in a regular heavy security facility, I guess you get out like one hour a day and then minimum security, uh, you're pretty much out all the time except at nighttime. Um, and they've got all these different levels and, and variants, but everything from you're out one hour a day to you're out once a week. And I guess they've got solitary where you're never out, hardcore torture. And again, it's run by a system that is the master criminals. They run the major criminal operations. And if you're a TV viewer watching an Infowars.com forward slash show, you can actually see the giant armored vehicle here in Travis County where I live. And the SWAT teams are being expanded. And they are training openly to take on the American people. They're soldiers of the foreign power that's occupied America. By the way, the Travis County SWAT team famously, they had a, the head of it was Lieutenant Beck. And they sent them in to intimidate me, not to speak at, at Travis County Commissioner's Court about fraud going on in the public schools. They were arresting kids that were late to class three times when the truancy law said it was 12, 12 absences unexcused in a semester uh, was criminal um, truancy. But under color of law, they were coming and even detaining and, 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 and filing uh, under the absent student assistance program, they're assisting you. Like everything else they do is uh, the, the, the Patriot Act, the New Freedom Initiative, the Affordable Care Act. It's, it's the opposite of whatever they say. So I kept going in every week to speak. So they sent in SWAT team guys. There's video of this somewhere. Mike Hansen's got it. And they sit on both sides of me and start threatening me. So I jump up and start yelling at them. And then Lieutenant Beck comes over the next week. He goes, just come over to my office. We're not all bad. Look, we got some of your videos on the wall. You know, we were just ordered to come over there and do that. Come on, man. There's no Delta Force in San Antonio. There's no, the government's not dealing drugs. I was in Force Recon in Vietnam. You know, the military's not coming after you. It's all made up. You know, and, and about three months later, he calls me. He goes, will you please come down here? And he goes, uh, yeah, Delta Force was just here. Tried to bribe me. It's all true. And I said, can I talk about this? He goes, yeah, go ahead. It's illegal. What they're doing. Well, they fired him. They fired him, made up some stuff, fired him right after that. So, uh, you know, that's, um, <laughs> and I had the new head of the Travis County SWAT team one time, and I was, Lynn Luby's come over and start talking to me. But I'm digressing. You're not tuning in from all over the world to hear about that. It's just that people better wake up to what's going on and better understand this is real. Because I know I'm right. It's not my opinion. The globalists are so arrogant, 98% of what they're up to is all on record. You, you, that is important to understand here. That's what's so frustrating about this is that their program of total enslavement is public. Now, let me uh, just, just run through the headlines. Let me just run through the headlines and I'll go back through them. We'll see if I'm able to do this. <sighs> Tensions ratcheted up in debate battle. President presses GOP floats short-term borrowing increase, but Boehner balks without deficit talks. So uh, tension ratchets up in the uh, debt battle. Now, what's so frustrating uh, about all of this is that they are maneuvering us on record to total bankruptcy. They've doubled the national debt under a vomit and uh, his uh, disgusting controllers. And they know this. And they know they're taking us the exact same direction they've taken Greece and Spain and France towards 100% taxation under the French model. They've hired the head French economist to set it up here. You're like, they'll never do that. Yes, they will. They will put 100% taxes in on the middle class to totally bankrupt you and stall the economy. Because they themselves, just like the French ruling class, on record are 100% tax exempt and have Swiss bank accounts, and they run the federal government in France, they're above the law. It came out in every French newspaper six months ago that the entire elite have Swiss bank accounts, payoffs, don't pay taxes. The head of the IMF is tax exempt, but she wants you to work six, seven days a week and pay higher taxes. They are total criminals. 
But the average person, even in France, is reading smartphones all day, watching TV all day, into fashion, into being cool, into how many sexual partners they can have, and so they don't know what's happening. And the average worker, you know, pays 65, 70% in tax in France. That's fine with them because they've got such class envy. And that's the goal. They're going to do that here as the ultra-rich shut down their competition. Let me show you the weekly standard right here. U.S. adds two times more debt than economic output. That's right. They're pushing us well over 100% debt to GDP. That's the goal is absolutely driving, because it's all fiat. These private bankers, we're in debt because we bailed them out. And then we go into debt to them for bailing them out. Remember that. But the average person has no economics understanding, so they can get away with this. There it is uh, with the graph from the Weekly Standard. Uh, the source is the Senate Budget Committee ranking member, Jeff Sessions. Debt increase, 2.4. Zero five billion. Two trillion four hundred and five billion. GDP increase one point one nine nine. You do the math, folks. And then Obama talks about how their terror is trying to burn the house down in his speech yesterday and that and that he's just trying to get the country going and that a debt increase isn't a debt increase and he's just trying to save us and his idiot Yeah, you, know, you have some ideological extremist who has a uh, a big bankroll, and they can s entirely skew our politics. And there are a whole bunch of uh, members of Congress right now who privately will tell you, I know uh, our positions are unreasonable, but we're scared that if we don't go along with the Tea Party agenda or the ex uh, some particularly extremist agenda, that we'll be challenged from the right. That's right. We're, we're extremists because the national debt doubling in six years and Obama spending more than all presidents before him back to George Washington and the open cloward and Piven plan to bankrupt the country and shutting down the power plants, shutting down the factories, harassing every business and industry not owned by globalists, all the bid rigging, the tens of billions to his buddies and fake energy companies, just shutting the nation down, shutting development down, shutting everything down in an orgy of control freak behavior, uh, letting the illegal aliens rally, but uh, arresting veterans if they try to go on the mall. Uh, just every form of humiliation. And then real libertarians are taking over the Republican Party, and it's making the Republican and Democratic establishments totally freak out. And of course, John McCain will tell them off record, I'm sorry these extremists don't want us to totally carry out our plan. I'm sorry there's some opposition. Look, you're the extremist in every federal training manual that's public, FBI flyers to police departments by the thousands on their own website, by the thousands. They put hundreds out a year. I mean, the Army is taught that their main enemy in the future at West Point will be the Tea Party. That's Forbes and Washington Times reporting that after we broke it. Okay, I'm explaining this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to break this down right now. The U.S. Army is taught George Washington is bad. Who are the extremists? Federal funds teach two plus two equals five to kids. Who's the extremist? These ought to actually be satire comedy writers, dark satire comedy writers, but it ain't funny because it's really happening. Who's teaching five-year-olds how to have anal sex in the public schools? Jocelyn Elders wanted to teach three-year-olds, wanted the teachers to, 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 to literally teach children how to masturbate and actually help them physically do it. Pedophilia. They are openly pushing pedophilia. And by the way, that agenda, they, they won. They now teach it. Pedophilia is taught in public schools, okay? Nationwide, they're teaching kids in Head Start, who are three, four years old. CNBC is telling us bankers are our rulers. MSNBC is telling us parents aren't parents anymore. Illegal aliens are allowed to vote all over the country now. They're given driver's license. They're above the law. But none of that's extreme. Those of us freaking out over it, freaking out over how we're being wrecked, Obama signs UN treaties to go after our guns, even though Congress says don't do it and it's unconstitutional. Uh, but, but none of that's extreme. We are extreme. But wait a minute. I thought the Tea Party didn't have any power. You see, they want to default the debt or threaten it 
If everybody gets scared when the stock market goes down, and the communist Chinese and the IMF lecture us about how they're in control of our nation now, like we're a third world nation, and then blame the Tea Party for all the debt and all the garbage and all the hyperinflation and all the things they've done. It's incredible. Let's continue. Divided government requires bipartisan negotiation. You mean bipartisan fraud. They want to just maneuver us quietly into collapse. They don't want any struggling as they suck the last pint of blood out of us. Obamacare marketplace, personal data can be used for law enforcement and auditing activities. Yeah, people are now getting into the actual bill. Of course, they're going to take money out of your account. It says that in the bill. Well, there's going to be a fine of 5000 a year, but we're not going to say how we're going to get it. But, but it's not true we're going to take the money, but we're just going to take it. That's a psychological warfare technique. Here's another one. Stewart says to Sibelius on health law, am I a stupid man when she sits there laughing in his face? Credit scores impact new Affordable Care Act provisions. We have a clip of that we'll play uh, in a moment. Uh, so absolutely, of course, your credit scores are... Look, this was written by offshore banks that own the major insurance companies to shut down all their competition, to lower the quality of care, to jack up the prices, and absolutely hammer the daylights out of you, dummy. I'm talking to the idiots that thought, all these idiots are going, I got to pay? I thought it was free. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lewis, I understand. One of the concerns is actually about credit scores. People are being asked to show their credit score when signing up. That's right, Lisa. It is asking you to show your credit score. It is required. And we were told if you have a low credit score, it could affect what you pay all for right. the premium. By the way, I haven't even gotten to this yet. You know, Mike Adams is not just an expert on health and wellness and one of the leading figures in the country on that because it was great research. He's also an incredible programmer who started major companies, you name it. He's helped us out with a lot of stuff. He was able to go in and look at the whole Obamacare site, and it's basically a fake front meant to not work. I mean, it's just like when the Justice Department uh, blocked the Amber Alert, the whole site was still there and programmers could see it. They were just blocking it to say it was down when it wasn't down. It's the same thing. This is meant to not work. It's all a sick joke. That's why they've been trying to delay it until they can have all this shutdown and blame Republicans for all the problems. So maybe Mitch McConnell is right. Go ahead and let them have it. Everybody wants it so bad. This is what you want. This is what you get. That article's up on Infowars.com. It's from NaturalNews.com. Very important uh, situation. We're going to continue on the other side. And then we've got the big breaking news in the next hour. The ultimate in the nanny state is going to premiere here. We have the footage of the ultimate morons. Spain is moving to tax the sun. Told you that was coming. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, helmets to be able to walk down the street are coming. You heard it here first. You will witness it in the next hour, giving you a hint of what's coming up. If you're a radio listener, you can go to infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feed so you can actually see this for yourself. We're going to be premiering it coming up in about 15 minutes here on air with Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens in studio with us. By the way, Josh Owens, not just Anthony Gucciardi, uh, and of course, Weldon Henson also went to the NSA. They all have a lot of courage in this so-called free country to dare to go to the gate and ask to talk to the media. And of course, the Salt Lake City Tribune and others wrote about it saying no one else would dare even approach the gates of Mordor, where they illegally spy on us and then freak out if you're there. Oh, 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 how dare you come here? You're so evil. You're so bad. We're the good guys. It's all about we're not trustworthy. The government is, though. I mean, since when do we just buy into, like, okay, we've done something wrong. We're all guilty. You're good. You're God. You're above reproach. You're above being researched. You're above being questioned. We're all scum, arrest reporters, persecute the Tea Party with the IRS, get caught lying about it, ship guns to Mexico, arm Al-Qaeda, get caught shipping drugs in, major banks caught laundering hundreds of billions a year in drug money, don't even get in trouble. I'm not supposed to be freaked out about that. And I got a bunch of clips of Obama coming up I haven't gotten to from his disgusting hour-long speech yesterday, but you heard him. It's the Tea Party that wants to not have a big debt increase. They're the ones that have endangered our economy and our credit. It's not the people that have maneuvered the country towards total bankruptcy. To actually permit default, according to many CEOs and economists, would be, and I'm quoting here, insane, catastrophic, chaos, these are some of the more polite words. Warren Buffett likened default to a nuclear bomb, a weapon too horrible to use. 
Warren Buffett, the guy that's the biggest recipient individually of banker bailout money and the new rape outs that they've been involved in. The guy that wrote the laws to exempt himself from all the taxes, who then talks about raising taxes on rich people, who he means are the middle class he wants to destroy. Warren Buffett that brags in his books about using imploding economies to make big profits. I mean, these guys are kleptocrats, the opposite of free market capitalists. They make me want to throw up. We're going to go to break here and to come back with more news and then the special breaking info. The audio is going to be powerful for radio listeners, but the video is unbelievable. <laughs> See, the wilder the question you ask trendy liberals who are actually hardcore brainwashed authoritarians, the more they'll say yes. We want to stick babies in blenders for Obama. Yes. We want to execute old women for Obama. Yes. I mean, there's nothing they won't do because as long as you literally go, uh, 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 trendy, and do this brainwashing thing, they literally, if you could say, kill yourself, I'm trendy, and they'd probably blow their own head off, I'm telling you. I mean, I've never seen the mega magnitude of these people. I mean, they are in a trance ready to walk off a cliff if you told them to. It's for Obama, they would just run off a cliff. Throw your baby off the cliff for Obama, okay, ah, just, I mean, they're dangerous. They'll follow any order. Briefly, it sold out last week, as you know. More came in. It's going to sell out very, very quickly. Just a fact. Unbelievable what it's doing for me. Energy, health, you name it. Thyroid is driving the hormones, the whole nine yards. This is nascent atomic iodine on the chart, the purest form of it. The regular stuff the medical doctors have said is absolutely toxic and garbage. Stuff Homeland Security pushes for emergencies, you name it. This is the real deal. This is nascent atomic iodine, double the strength tap, the price, InfoWarsLife.com, and we have it back in for a limited time. We're trying to put in a really big run so we don't run out again, but if you want it, InfoWarsLife.com, and your purchase also supports the broadcast, 888-253-3139, and while you're there, check out all the water filters at InfoWarsStore.com. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. You know, there was a situation on a commuter train and no one noticed it because they were all busy on their smartphones. We got a special report on this coming up after the break, but... Police, rail commuters on phones didn't notice gun. The man drew the gun several times on the crowded San Francisco commuter train with surveillance video showing him pointing it across the aisles without anyone noticing and then putting it back against his side. Yeah, it looks like uh, nobody uh, got scared so he, the psycho didn't kill him. Because there's just such zombies. I mean, he could say, the gun is Obama, he loves you. And they go, blow my head off. I love it. I mean, I'm serious. If you say, say, for Obama... Like, kill your baby for Obama. They'll do it. The other passengers were so absorbed in their phones and tablets, they didn't notice the gunman until he randomly shot and killed a university student, authority said. <laughs> just, just, before that moment, footage showed the man pull out the forty-five caliber pistol and once swipe his nose with the hand holding the weapon, authorities told the San Francisco Chronicle. These weren't concealed movements. The gun was very clear, District Attorney George Gaskin said. These people are in very close proximity with him, and nobody sees this. They're just so engrossed, texting and reading and whatnot, they're completely oblivious to the surroundings. That's right. San Francisco police say people that pay too much attention to digital technology are also vulnerable to theft. You mean being zombies? And they go on to say they interview a lot of crime victims that don't even know when their purse is taken off their arm. And again, folks, it's medical. The public is in a trance state from television and the flickering screens. I mean, this is like BBC News reporting on the studies. And their, their IQs have lowered. Their brainwaves have lowered. And it's genius level now with a TV head if they know how to count to five, basically. I mean, I'm not kidding. That's why they teach two plus two equals five in the public schools. I'm not joking, because this is the scientific wrecking of everyone ahead of the eugenics uh, controlled kill bioweapon release, the 12 monkey type scenario. And the globalists all say it. They say, look at the public. We've successfully dumbed them down. They're animals. They deserve to die. We're moving forward with life extension technological program. And it is just like lemmings running and jumping off a cliff. 
we should create a, this is famous footage of lemmings jumping off the cliff. We should have like the Obama symbol in the water below. Because when they see one lemming jump, they all start jumping. And they don't even swim once they jump in. They just, I'm telling you, if there was a big Obama symbol, like floating on top of that, that people, if there could be razor blades spinning under them. And then they all are dead. And then they see the others drown themselves. So that one runs in to kill itself. I mean, this is it. This is Obama supporters. They're not sheeple. They're lemmingals or lemming peoples. I don't know how you say that. And I'm not just making fun of them. That's why MSNBC talks about how smart liberals are all day and how they're the cult of how smart they are because they know they're just psychopathic predators, hardcore fascist, if you, to use their paradigm, ultra right wing. And they literally know they're preying on jellyfish that like to sit there at home feeling like they're upper level crust, uh, brain bug, uh, you know, type uh, cast thinking about how smart they are all day. Because even the smartest ones are just control freak psychopaths. I just can't believe how disgusting these people are. When we come back right out of the break, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the big surprise. And then right after we air it on the radio, it's going to be posted via YouTube up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Paul Watson is in the process right now of writing a story. I know it's a conspiracy theory. Once people read and people wrote, but I promise there's a country called the UK. There's a country called England in the UK. And there's a person named Paul Watson who writes things. Not talking to our regular listeners, only the advanced intelligence liberals who are actually ultra fascist scumbag control freak trash who will do absolutely anything they're told. And we're going to premiere this straight ahead inside the mind of absolute slaves begging for enslavement. In the last decade, we have seen actions by the nanny state in North America, but also in Europe, that are beyond the absurdity that the great mind of Kurt Vonnegut could even come up with. We have seen dodgeball and then tag banned all across the country in thousands of school districts. Now they've announced in multiple states no more footballs or other balls will be allowed or other recreational materials on the playground during recess because someone might get hurt. And it's because of this tyranny, that's what it is, meant to make us totally domesticated slaves that is being pushed by the federal government through the states that I thought of the idea of sending our reporters out in Austin, Texas to talk to the public and see if they would accept wearing helmets by law to be able to walk down the street for their safety and for Obamacare to lower the price of premiums. We talked to 20 people and 14 of them signed the petition to pass a law to make the general population wear helmets when you walk down the street. Think of the absurdity of this. And to try to wake them up, the petition was even titled Chumps. Of course, the universal term for meaning you're an idiot, a mark, a fool, a schmuck, a, a, a sucker. This is not satire. This is not a joke. This is really happening. This is the amazing level of conditioning and brainwashing that the general public, especially trendies, are under. Here is Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens report. Can I get you to sign my petition to uh, compel people to wear helmets while they're walking? Sure. Awesome. Can we? Can I get you to sign up to make everyone wear in, one? Though, it's like, to just go. Would that ahead. be a mandatory law or something? You're saying that? I mean, I hope so. We can get it passed. Oh my gosh! Texting while walking. Texting I, while walking. Do you I know was in New Jersey? Actually, about to place a call. Uh, still, you know, in New Jersey, they're giving out $85 tickets for people that are caught texting while walking, and they're going to start doing that here. That's why I am trying to get a petition to get people to wear helmets while they're walking. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's great. Everyone who just doesn't want to pay attention, who just wants to like zombie out, can just walk in a special lane wow. that's made just for them. Wow. But until then, everyone just needs to have like protective gear on so that I'm not going to hurt you, you wow. won't hurt me. Yeah, sure, I'll say. I think it's a good idea. I will. Yeah. You want to make everybody wear helmets? <laughs> These dummies need to wear helmets. <laughs> that's crazy. Just make everything safe. 
For me, I'm a libertarian, you know? For me, I feel like as long as you don't cause any harm Ooh, to Ooh, libertarist. To just get people to start wearing helmets to keep people safe on the streets. Hold on. <laughs> that way everyone can just talk on their phones and text freely and they don't have to worry and it'll help keep like insurance costs down. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. While walking? Yes. Why while walking? So they don't endanger themselves. Oh, oh. <laughs> Say that again. I was texting and I slipped right on a thing just like this and it was wet. And I was like, oh, and it was so embarrassing. And everyone saw, and they were all laughing at me. And I couldn't sue anyone for my butt. I hit my tailbone. And I was like limping for a week. Like we're all in this together. Like we have socialized healthcare now. So it's like everyone's responsible for everyone. So if I fall, you fall. Well, you can get them like form fitted to your head. They have like special gear. You can make them like tactical. You could get like yeah. with the Put the water bottles, they have those that Super you wear cool. at the b baseball park. Yeah, I mean, I like helmets. They're already kind of starting this whole thing, like in New York, they're banning dodgeball, banning other sports that are going to hurt people and get people injured. And like one of the most dangerous things is, is walking. Yeah. People just walk out in front of a bus. So. I'll sign it. And it makes sense technically, so. Guys, would you like to sign this petition to get people to wear helmets while walking? Super trendy. Well, I think UT were super trendy, so we can get it. What starts here changes the world. I'm I'm down for it. We can't be trusted, and that's why if we can just make this a, a law, a rule that we can enforce. Yeah, no, of course, tickets for anyone without helmets. Godspeed. You can do it. I believe. Thanks. <laughs> And as long as you say, or say it's for Obama, they will sign it. We went and talked to 20 people, 14 signed it. Maybe tonight on the Nightly News, we can show a few clips because you're hosting it, Leanne, of the people that actually were against it because there's only a few clips of them in there. I like to show people that actually have a brain. And most of these people are not inherently evil. They're just incredibly pathetic, incredibly gullible. And as long as you say it's progressive, it's trendy, let's do it. And remember, they've banned first dodgeball, then running, some recess areas. You have to sit down now. This is total prisoner training, and it's being done by design. And so Josh Owens went out there and ran camera. Uh, Josh, let's get your take on this first and then Leanne's. Uh, you've only been working here a few months, doing a great job up at the NSA as well. For folks that don't know who you are, you shot camera on that. What is it like to actually go out and, and now not just be watching us on PrisonPlanet.tv or on YouTube or listening to the radio, but to actually be behind the scenes here and then to go out and see the victims of the brainwashing? Well, what's so crazy about it is you would think that we would have went out there and talked to 100 people and 14 would have signed. And literally, we talked to 20 people and 14 of them signed. And <laughs> they were so oblivious. I wasn't even that far away from the people with the camera. And... They didn't even notice me. They didn't even, they're so oblivious of their surroundings. They didn't even look to their right to see that I was standing there filming them. And Leanne, you came in this morning and pointed out the point that police say rail commuters on phones didn't notice a gun. The guy pulled his gun out, put it to people's heads, deciding who he wanted to kill, literally just dripping with psychopathic enjoyment, and then finally chose some young woman, and no one even noticed he was going around with a gun pointing it at people. That's how self-centered they are. They're worse than like dodo birds that have never been around humans, and the sailors show up to eat them, and they don't even run. It's just they have no common sense. They just go, oh, Obama, oh, I love you. <laughs> One of those ladies you talked to, the big tall blonde, she actually went, okay. She actually <laughs> made a sheep noise. Did you notice that? I did. It, I laughed. What's happening? I mean, what, what is this like? Because well, when I sent you out, you said they're not going to be this dumb. No, I was actually psyching myself up to be laughed off the street. Like, I just was expecting people were going to be like, what a moron. You want us to wear helmets? But they were like, yeah, I like helmets. Oh, oh it'll bring my insurance premiums down. That makes sense. So, yeah, it was uh, very surprising. I was getting into it. I mean, I think if you went out and said, for Obama, stab your children in the head with ice picks, <laughs> they would actually, I'm serious. I think, I think half would do it. Because if it's for Obama, there's no way he can be wrong. So, like... Of course, if they actually have kids, that would be stronger than their Obama worship. But if you tell people that didn't have kids and said, we want to slit children's throats for Obama, they'd probably do it. I'm not kidding. In fact, I want to do that next. Gosh, don't send me out. Well, people were so... <laughs> no, no, we went out and said, kill babies up to age three, and they signed it. Yes, yeah. they should. For Obama.
They sure did. Everybody else then copied our piece, which is great. Yeah, they sure did. And we were very... I mean, it's okay to kill babies up to age three if it's for Obama. Yeah. You're not racist, are you? Yeah, yeah. Funny. Well, because it, it's a burden on the family. <laughs> Children. People were so... I mean, people were just out there in just a submissive state. All it took... Uh, was, yeah, uh. some, some people initially, they were just like, oh, I don't know. And then all it took was Leanne to just be like, oh, are you walking while texting? And they were just like, okay, I'll sign it. I'll sign it. <laughs> to Leanne, they're submissive. So right. to the government, of course, they're submissive. To anyone who has power, of course, they're submissive. And that's why you now have a busload of Japanese and German tourists and, and Canadians pulling up at Yellowstone. And it's like, we're shut down pulling guns on them like it's an FBI crime bust. Because literally, everyone grovels all day to them. Oh my gosh, here it is. Do you really need a helmet to play soccer? School district says all students must wear headgear to prevent <laughs> concussions while playing non-contact sports uh, in uh, England. So, so here it is. Well, they're already saying just no, no playing ball, period. The AP headline was don't bring your balls to school. Right, exactly. Don't play with your balls. There's no more recreational activities. Because they go and they just spend all day in school just you know, from nine in the morning to nine. Well, they want to get us ready for the total takeover. I mean, th this is a military takeover. Yeah. So, of course, you're not allowed. Look, two plus two equals five. If you want to screw kids up, you teach them that. Yeah. Right. Kids, two plus two equals five. Teach the five-year-olds how to have anal sex. That's freedom. That sounds like <laughs> freedom. freedom to me. USA. <laughs> USA. <laughs> USA. What about the one... Uh, Liber terrorist. I don't want to give the Southern Poverty Law Center ideas. You punned that, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I I don't know. It just came to me. And I felt kind of bad because he was actually the only person. He was so calm and just really trying to rationalize with me. Like, really, you want you want people to wear helmets? And just and he was so polite. And I was just being really outrageous. And, and he's like, look, I'm a libertarian. And I was like, libertarist. Can we show tonight on the nightly news the uh, outtakes of the three or four people that actually could talk? Because notice yeah. the people that sign it are like, uh, uh, and then they sign it and go, more power to you. Yeah. They know it's outrageous, but they go, I submit to it. That makes it okay. Exactly. If it's going to, if it's going to help Obama, I'm all for it. <laughs> it's going to help socialize my health care. And it'll Let's help do keep, it. like, insurance costs down. Right. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is literally a sheeple. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think their new mascot should be lemmings running off a cliff. I we need to make a T-shirt about like trendy. It's cool and have like a cliff with <laughs> lemmings running off. Of course, the lemmings won't get it. Yeah, but is it a Facebook thing? Uh, <laughs> like they're adorable. Hashtag lemming. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag annoying. <laughs> Darren McBreen was out at some outdoor concert, he was telling me, and they're all sitting there, and somebody got up to walk in front of him, and the, and the woman beside him goes, hashtag annoying. <laughs> no. And then some woman goes, hashtag angry. <laughs> well, that's actually how they communicate now. That's our vernacular now is wow. Twitter. Wow, idiocracy. Twitter speak. Right. Yeah. Well, and if they intellectually can't debate you on something, you're like, I think the quantum mechanics theory is actually being uh, unified with the unified field theory of the cyclotronic uh, proving of the Hadron test of last March. And they go, sounds pretty racist. <laughs> <laughs> racist. Uh, I actually think the Keynesian system itself is a fraud, but they're even diverging from that. We're going to have hyperstack inflation. Sounds racist. He's reading a book. Racist. <laughs> Let's do one more segment on racism. Helmets for walking. Happy pleasure laughing at brainwashed, brain damaged trendies that have grown up on growth hormone and the milk, so they're eight feet tall. The girls, uh, the men, uh, by the genetic engineering and the chemicals put in the food, are stunted and have low IQs. This is all Brave New World. Aldous Huxley, whose brother ran the UN program, said, no, this book I wrote in 32 is the real plan. We're putting additives in. Nothing can save you. He gave a speech at Berkeley in 62, right before he died, basically laughing at everyone. And so we're now in this paradigm, and these people have very low IQs on average. Uh, the, the numbers show the U.S. is now the dumbest country in the world. England trails behind us. And it's been done chemically and biologically. The White House science czar wrote a book about it in the 70s bragging. And so we laugh at these people. It's a mix of chemical, biological, uh, but more than uh, nurture, it is, it is an artificial system of nature being manipulated, and then the brainwashing is the nurture, uh, using the scientific terms for development of these people, to totally dumb them down. And it's gotten to the point where people are in such trances being interfaced with the computers and television that it's not interactive and it's not challenging, uh, that they're losing their humanity. Early onset of neurological disorders are happening. Early onset of Alzheimer's and 35-year-olds is now happening. 
and it's directly attributable to the television and screen time. It's brain damaging children. And you add the chemicals, the biologicals, the radiologicals to it. It is a cocktail for disaster. Uh, closing comments on this, Leanne. You were pointing out the whole Google Glasses thing is the next level of this. But not only are they some idiots stumbling around, now they're surveilling you for Google. And tell us what you're going to cover on the nightly news tonight, what Eric Schmidt had to say. Well, Eric Schmidt said that he didn't want to cross the creepy line of implanting chips in people's heads. And then he chuckled and he said, until the technology gets better. So they're definitely <laughs> going to cross the creepy line here. That's a quote. No, I mean, they're going in the brain. It's already way past creepy. Yeah. Oh, they, that's their whole plan. But they're going to. That should be a new character. <laughs> creepy, the Google clown. <laughs> to join Prozac, the killer clown. Well, he has to be a creepy robot, a, a transhumanist. Creepy. A transhumanist robot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but continuing, uh, I mean, what was it like to actually see them? agreeing with you that we should all wear helmets. Well, I don't like making fun of people or making people look like fools. So for me, it was- Well, they are fools hard. though. Yes, well, actually Mark Dice was the one who told me because I asked, how do you how do you just talk to these people and not bust out laughing or make fun of them? And he said that, he told me this on Twitter, he said that he just seethes with anger about how the downfall of America is the fault of these people who just won't pay attention. They don't pay attention. They don't care. All they care about is, you know, that what what's on their iPad and they think it's cool to not care. They right. I mean, because television and the culture teaches that you're in power if you don't care. No, you're a loser. You're an idiot. You don't count. You're a moron. Right. They like there's oh I don't I'm not into politics. I I watch VH1. I like Obama, but don't know what party he's in. Yeah, exactly. It's. It's sad. It's like, yeah, we're going to arrest the gun owners and put them in camps, but you don't have to tell me I'm ready to arrest them right now. I mean, some of them are actually smart. They're authoritarians. Well, that's what we're working on. Our stories, uh, this whole Obamacare, the website being down, we're frankly thinking it's not going to go up until the government they you know reopens. They don't want anyone to know. That's oh, no. Uh, actually, down. programmers have looked at it. Uh, Natural News uh, editor Mike Adams is a top programmer. He looked at it. It's, it's fake on purpose. Yeah. There's nothing there. It's not meant to work. It's all a big giant joke on everybody. It's all it is is a tax to insurance companies. Of course, the exchange isn't going to work. They're going to make you buy it and fine you. Right. And law enforcement's in there. Of course they are. It's, it, it's set up to mainline the NSA. And I was shocked. I was reading something this morning about how the Federal Reserve bought AIG for eighty-five billion after the with the TARP bailout. Or yes. Whatever. So that's like the hugest insurance company. The Federal Reserve owns them, and so which is really a private bank itself. It's exactly. So how are the rates going to go down, and how is this helping the poor, who are going to get? Well, I mean, here here's the deal: the eugenicists poor. don't want to help the poor. Oh, and then you've got the trendies who are going to UT where you went, who are never going to get any job unless it's mm -hmm. in the government, wandering around like idiots. Who, but, but again, they want it, and they're going to vote to take our guns. They're going to vote to take our kids. They're, they're coming for us. You understand? They're like a horde of piranhas. They're not like lemmings. They're coming, and they deserve our money and our energy, and they say our kids are theirs. And I got news for them. They're a bunch of chumps. Can you believe that, that the, the petition, you guys, who came up with the idea to call it chumps, and they still signed that? <laughs> And they still signed it. I was it. like, I need something. I just need it to be blatant. So because a lot of people do read, so they want to see, you know, get a little more. So it says, you're a chump, sign this. <laughs> give me your give me your phone number. Give me your name. The chumps asked the city of Austin to force citizens to wear helmets to protect themselves and then eventually set up a special sidewalk for people that they can just take that. Who quote want to be zombies. And they're like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> we want a zombie lane. They're like, that would be so much more convenient. Well, incredible. <laughs> You've topped anything we've ever done, even when they said in Austin, ban water for, <laughs> for the earth. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Uh, thank you, Mr. Owens. We'll be right back. Uh, stay with us. We got Stuart Rhodes coming up with Key Intel. By the way, when you see the film Demolition Man, one of the better Sylvester Stallone movies, it's a nanny state corporate global tyranny that shut down all its competition that gives you tickets and fines if you're not trendy. If you try to run, you're given tickets. If you cuss, you're given tickets. And then it turns out the underground criminal network's actually run by the government that, that wants everybody domesticated so it can use the hardcore criminals on whoever they want who've been disarmed. And they're telling you through fiction what their real plan is. Cass Sunstein has written multiple papers at the White House on this ninification.
They have thousands of armored vehicles, billions of rounds of ammo, checkpoints. They're training with no hesitation to shoot five-year-old children. Remember, remember those paper targets Homeland Security bought, demonizing the founding fathers, all of it, while telling you that fatherhood's bad and families are bad and don't use the word mother or father or husband or wife in government uh, circles because it's hateful towards gays or lesbians and uh, the, your children belong to the state MSNBC says in promos this is the takeover this is the program of total control where they're all macho paramilitary but only them then the number one enemy once they've taken over is the veterans who aren't of any use to them anymore that's why they're going to autonomous drones, autonomous robots. That's the Pentagon plan from the 70s. Well, now, Defense One reports why America wants drones that can kill without humans. They've had autonomous drones for at least five years, making the decisions, making the kills. The Pentagon plan by 2025 is to have almost no humans on the battlefield. You're going to have humans back there lasing targets and as maintenance people working on all sorts of systems where a uh, cruise missile flies over and releases 100 little bat-winged, uh, in fact, we've shown that the Pentagon and Air Force promo video, they already have this developed, and it flaps down, and it's got either high explosive or it's either got a uh, projectile system. It surveils you and then kills you. So this is also the ultimate coward system where, where no one is able to uh, basically stand down an order that's unconstitutional. Now, I don't think it's all going to work perfectly. I don't think it's all going to get there. I don't think that, check it out, Stuart, see it up there on the wall? I don't think that they're going to be successful with all of this, but this is their plan. This is their program. We're going to go to Stuart Rhodes in a moment. But the video that we just premiered here on the radio slash TV will be going up on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com, and I will tweet it at Real Alex Jones when it goes up in the next 5, 10 minutes. Paul Watson's writing the article about it right now where 14 out of 20, that's, what, 70-plus percent, in Austin, Texas, signed a petition that said, you are a chump. It actually said, you are a chump on the top, and Austin chumps want to ban walking without a helmet. And by the way, they already got billboards up, the big flashing ones, saying, if you drink and walk, don't drink and walk. And I asked the cops, they said, no, if we see you drink and come out of a bar walking, not with a beer, but we're going to arrest you for drinking and walking. So, so, folks, this is the nanny state tyranny on PCP. And, and I got to say it, I believe we've topped it with the trendies here. I mean, we found the new level. And I'm telling you, it's scary. As long as you say it's trendy or it's for Obama, they will do anything. Next, I'm going to send the crew out to say that we need to euthanize all children under age 10 for the earth. Or maybe, like, euthanize all white children under the age of 10 uh, to make up for slavery. And I predict... 60% will sign for killing all white children. I I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Okay? I'm not kidding around here. You don't understand the magnitude of the mind control they're under. And I want to create maybe a video on YouTube, not the Nightly News because it's condensed, where we show unedited all 20 people yesterday signing the form to ban walking without a helmet on. Because, I mean, th th this is not staged, folks. I mean, th th nine out of 10 Austinites said ban water for the earth. It was for, we said, for Obama, we're going to ban hydrogen monoxide. And the guy's like sitting there hitting on McAdoo going, yeah, you know, I've got a degree from Caltech or whatever. No, it was from Columbia in chemical engineering. And he's like, oh, really? You want to ban hydrogen monoxide? I was like, yeah, I do. It's for the earth. I'm really trendy right now. And these people are not real. They've grown up in front of television, and they think that's the real world. And, and, and I've learned they're not real people. They're like biological androids, but they're like a horde of dumbed-down piranhas coming for us. Now, we're going to go to Stuart Rhodes here in a minute with big breaking news and a battle plan to save the republic. I absolutely concur with his analysis. It is spot on. He'll be with us for 30 minutes into the next hour, and we'll take your calls in the next hour with Stuart Rhodes. He's down here to be interviewed for Obama Deception 2 that has an early release date next year now just because I will sell no information, warfare, truth before it's time. I will sell no wine before it's time. So that is coming up. Briefly, remember... We are funded by listeners and viewers like you, not by, like NPR that just got 400 million bucks plus during the government shutdown of your money to preach anti-family, anti-gun, anti-American propaganda for the foreign banks that run it. We're funded by you supporting our local sponsors and AMF affiliates. We're funded by you 
supporting our national sponsors and the sponsors on Infowars.com. And we're funded by you buying the highest quality dash cams to protect yourself and your family. We've got the rear view mirror type that are camouflaged so folks don't know they're there to protect yourself with insurance situations, out of control bureaucrats, criminals, police, you name it. Fight Big Brother with your own personal system. Uh, on record, we have that discounted, lowest price anywhere, InfoWarsStore.com. We have the Pro Pure stainless steel water filtration systems that cut out the fluoride, the glyphosates, all of it. One filtration system with Pro One. This is the best system, and we have the best system, lowest price, 10% off promo code WATER. 10% off promo code WATER. All that is at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, if you go to InfoWarsLife.com, it takes you directly to the area on InfoWarsStore.com that has the nascent iodine, double the strength, half the price, the leading competitor in the organic uh, glycerin base system. Uh, again, there is a war on real iodine. The, the stuff they put out, the pills they put out, it's, it's the chemical garbage iodine that's quite frankly toxic. It's better than nothing during a radiological disaster. But this is the stuff that is amazing for the thyroid overall health, allows your thyroid to regulate the other hormones, according to the medical doctors and others we've interviewed. And I've been on it now almost two months. It is life-changing. I am even more crazed. I have more energy. I feel even more kick-butt male. I just... I'm loving every minute of it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Everybody said this is the stuff. It was so amazing. What the literature and one month into it, I said, I'm going to produce masses of it and promote it. Infowarsstore.com. We sold out of the first wave. More came in. It'll sell out very quickly. The trend is continuing. It's helping fund us as well. Win, 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 win. That's Infowarslife.com. You can get them in groups of one up to 10 discounted. Infowarslife.com or toll free 888-253-3139. All right, Stuart Rhodes on the nightly news with us last night, the founder of Oath Keepers, constitutional lawyer, also worked with uh, Ron Paul as one of his staffers. And in the last six, seven years since he left there, he's really done yeoman's work. He's also an Army paratrooper, uh, retired uh, from the Army via a uh, paratrooping accident. And he's, he's just a great all-around guy, good friend of mine, gotten to know him over the years. And he's here in Austin with us for Obama deception too, but I wanted to get him in studio today, live on air, to really try to give you the floor to break down where we are as a republic, what the enemy's doing. You've wargamed it, I've wargamed it, you've wargamed it with a lot of special warfare people. I've read the globalist owned literature. Their biggest mistake is operating like we're all completely brain damaged, when that's not true. They may have shut down these lemmings with chemical warfare and psychological brainwashing. It hasn't worked on us, it's done the opposite. It's like being tortured every day. We're so awake, it's incredible. And we know they're one major ace in the hole, what they're going to pull. It's already inc uh, incremental uh, shutdown of the economy. They're going to drop the hammer because they know they're running out of time. Repeat what you said last night in the interview for Obama Deception 2. Break down the battle space. Break down the future. Break down the destiny we have and how hard we better work now to try to reverse it before they completely implode the economy. Number one mission is get prepared. Number two, expose. They're the ones behind the implosion, as they've done everywhere else. Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, OathKeepers.org. Organization is exploding. Your military contacts give you the same info we get. Uh, half the military is awake right now. It's accelerating. The enemy is in crisis. Stuart Rhodes. Yeah, at least half of them. In fact, in, among special warfare personnel, it's more like 75%. And this is the problem they have, is the powers that be understand that there's now a growing, um, sizable percentage of the population who can no longer be fooled. They've taken the red pill. They see what's going on, and they're no, no longer manipulable with, with their uh, false flags or their use of fear. So they, they know that their time is limited. Given enough time, we will prevail. It could wind up like 1989 East Germany, where you had a mass stand down of the military and a mass stand up of the people. And without the support of the military, the Stasi are running and hiding because they couldn't, they couldn't overpower the people. There's no way they could do it. So that's possible. But I think that before we get to that tipping point of that mass awareness, which we will if we're allowed the time, I think they'll try to pull the plug on the economy. It's all they have left. They have their, their Armageddon option of the economic neutron bomb, collapse the dollar, kill the dollar, blame it on the Chinese, especially under, under uh, the cover of a war with Syria. They could say, hey, we entered Syria to get rid of uh, chemical weapons, and the Ch Russians and Chinese retaliated economically. They wanted that war as political cover, but now that's failing. The, their gun grab failed. Uh, I mean, they're desperate.
So they, but they still could pull out the plug on the economy and kill the dollar and start a run on the dollar worldwide. And that could be potentially as destructive as a nuclear exchange or an EMP, EMP strike because if you kill the economy, Americans don't have food storage. Americans are, are the most unprepared population on the face That's of the That's been done by design. They've encouraged right. that. Absolutely. They, they prepared themselves. Relentlessly, they've been, been putting in place mechanisms for control. All the weapons they would need, all the all the armed armored vehicles they would need, and all the ammunition they would need to control us or kill us. Did you see that Marine Corps colonel that went public and said they're pre-deploying pre everything against Absolutely. us? Absolutely, you bet. Yeah. And anybody who's been in, in military training understands um, logistics. Logistics wins the battle. It's not grab your rifle and 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 run out in the street like. It's out. mass and supply chain and then initiative. It's logistics. And so on our side, they are preparing the future battle space on their side for their benefit. On our side, we need to be careful about being distracted with all this bombardment of negative information. Are they doing this? They're doing that. Let's go protest here. Let's go protest there. But be careful about that because we only have so much blood in our bodies. A good analogy is that they're hooked up to an unlimited blood bank through Soros or through the Federal Reserve, like you just said. You know, the funding for NPR is, is billions of dollars. Versus what do we get? On our side, it's individuals who have to fund our campaigns. And so be careful what you go and spend your money on or your, or your time and your, and your sweat because you only have so much. And so rather than, than running around protesting everywhere, sometimes protests make a big difference. I think the symbolic virtue of the veterans in, in Washington, D.C., the World War II veterans, kicking down the barricades and going in anyway is, is very valuable. Something like that is worth getting behind. Sure. Uh, Second Amendment, uh, nullification. I mean, I think it's full spectrum. Get ready yourself, but also be on the offensive in the info war. I say do everything. Sure, but be careful about spending all your time just running around waving a sign. They want you to do that. What they don't want you to do is, in your local areas, stand up. Oh, oh, I agree. Up. You need to be going to talk to the police chief and warning them, giving them info, finding out, getting intelligence where they stand. You need to be getting with the military veterans, preparing for not fighting, but preparing to be leaders in your area. Absolutely. That's why we started a new initiative within Oath Keepers. We're calling it the Civilian Pres uh, Civilization Preservation Teams. And the whole focus is on getting our community squared away at the very bottom, right down in the neighborhood watches, right down in the veterans halls in particular. Because we've gotten the guns and the ammo. Now we need to really do the boots on the ground, ready to take care of our neighbors. That'll put us in the leadership position immediately. The logistics. You need to have the ability to feed your neighbors, to have communications, to have clean water and power, and to have emergency medical care. Because by the way, when stuff collapses, they're coming anyways. Right, that's what you need. That's what you need. Look at any hurricane, any tornado, any any natural disaster. What do you wind up needing? You need clean water. You need shelter. You need a way to keep warm, and you need medical care and food. Those are the things you need. So why not get that squared away in your own neighborhood right now, so you are able to take care of things. You are able to be the force for good in your community, rather than them all being desperate and scared and relying on FEMA coming in, who says, "Hey." Yeah, sure, we'll give you food, turn in your guns, turn in your neighbors. Okay. And the police are already priming the pump all over the country in Detroit and L.A. saying we'll give you grocery money for your guns. You bet. You'll get, you'll get the EBT card if you turn in your neighbor, you turn in your guns. So we need to make sure that we are strong. If you have a squared away community, it's much more likely the National Guard will refuse the orders, the police will refuse the orders, and the active duty military in particular will say no to gun confiscation. Or but they plan law. on having all the welfare folks riot, where if you're not ready, you'll beg the military in. Well, sure, and not just welfare folks. Average Americans who go to nine to five jobs right now have how much food in their, in their, in their house? Two days. Three or four days at the most, right, probably more like two days. So wait a week, two they're just as desperate as any... And the globalists admit they've done all this by design, getting us ready like the Ukraine under the Soviets for the cultural re-education like Mao did. They did the same thing in China. This is a tried and true plan. Mm -hmm. David Rockefeller said, we will use food as a weapon in America. Sure, you look at the historic precedents in uh, Stalinist Russia. Stalin starved out the kulaks, independent farmers, confiscated all their food and killed them through mass starvation. And the same thing happened with Mao and China. Anytime the government wants to stop a mass of people who they cannot just kill outright with weapons, they will use starvation. By the way, we're not just saying this. This is on record. They, the globalists have all written. We are under globalist occupation. We've still got some resistance and some media. People are waking up. But they really would like to do this if they can get away with it. Sure. And so we need to see it as they're shipping the future battle space. We know a fight's coming. You need to re recognize and realize that. 
if we can do it, like I said, with a mu enough of awakening, we could be a peaceful, a peaceful re revolution, a mass stand down like in 1990s Germany. But we should presume the worst that, that before that can happen, they'll pull the plug and try to starve us out. What I like about your plan is that it's historical, it's well researched, and you're not saying Oath Keepers runs at all. It's a basic blueprint of peaceful preparation and resistance, civilization preservation teams, start them everywhere. Right. The enemy can't infiltrate us everywhere. Plus, they've lost the major initiative. The average police, and especially the military, now know we told the truth because of Patriots decades ago warning people. They're like, wow, these folks knew what was coming. They're now listening to us. They love their family. They know their, their paycheck doesn't go anywhere anymore. They know they're being sold out. They know George Washington's being brainwashed. How did the globalists miscalculate to openly badmouth the founding fathers in the official army training manual now? I mean, that shows the traitors have taken over. I mean, that's conviction right there. I think it's their own hubris. They, they, like, I went to Yale Law School, and I can tell you it's an incestuous community. They talk to each other only. They go to these special uh, confabs with other elites, and so they don't really see what's going on in small-town America. They, they believe their own bull, basically, their own propaganda. They're smoking their own dope. Exactly, smoking their own dope. And so they have the hubris and arrogance to believe they got it all figured out. They have not successfully undermine our culture they have not successfully don't they know that the patriots for 50 years saw this coming mainly military guys that were inside the intelligence briefings and learned about this takeover they've been trying forever don't they know we have a massive jump on them and have been warning people for decades no i think they don't i think they they, they believe they've got it all figured out and they're too smart but they're too smart for their own good so they're, they're uh, intellectual idiots. And they've taken our restraint as weakness as well. That's right. Same thing the British did with the, with the Founding Fathers. They believed that because they had put up with so much abuse and a long chain of abuses that they would never fight. And they were very wrong. Well, I hope they listen because I know they're watching. I know the White House is watching on record. You globalists will be brought to justice when we defeat you. And remember Nuremberg. It's going to happen again. Remember that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. By the way, I never even got to this in the last hour. Democratic Congresswoman suggests martial law to end government shutdown, and she means political martial law to use really unconstitutional procedures to just force, force this through and ignore what the House is doing. And New Republic called for Obama uh, two days ago to do exactly what uh, Yeltsin did, but the Duma had clearly been kicked out, though, so that was more legitimate, even though he was a crook as well attack the Congress, basically throw them out. I mean, it really shows the mindset of these people. Like when the internal IRS memos came out, it turned out they were ordered by Obama to go after the Tea Party. The memos were like, these are scary, dangerous people. We've got to shut them down. It's like they don't want communism. They're scary. So the mid-level people, even though she was one of the head IRS people, she's still mid-level. They're like communist and socialist ideologues. But the people above them are just piratical megabanks. But their cannon fodder, it's like that White House petition they had, they got like 100,000 signatures to form communist uh, militias to take on the Tea Party. I mean, they're dreaming of like, they're Che Guevara and they're going to take us out, Stuart Rhodes. They're useful idiots, is what they are. You said, the people pulling the strings behind them are not going to institute world socialism, you know, so there's some utopia for them. They're going to wind up killing them off at the end. Founder of Oath Keepers with us. You know, speaking of Yale, where you graduated top of your class, you uh, won that big award for solving the public uh, puzzle of uh, enemy combatant status, where you predicted in 2004 a lot of what's now uh, actually uh, happened. Like drone strikes. Like drone strikes. Right. And now it's here. Uh, you saw it coming. What will come? What will America be like if we don't fully mobilize, get prepared to be the leadership in our area? A cross between um, Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany uh, Stasi East Germany and Stalinist Russia. So totalitarian. Yeah, that's their plan. Right. Absolutely. So we have to realize, like Patrick Henry said, you know, realize the truth, however hard it may be, and then, then provide for it. Recognize where you're really at and then get ready to take care of it. And notice how their war gaming is now playing out. Five years ago, Tea Party's number one enemy, returning veterans in the fetters, Ron Paul, they're the enemy, get them. Oath Keepers, Alex Jones, they're the enemy, get them. Because we're the only opposition, and now Obama is, it's gone from Tea Party doesn't have any power, the real Tea Party, not the neocon version. That takeover failed. Now the real Tea Party has taken over the House, may take over the Senate. They're scared, and they're actually ringing the alarm bell 
now saying oh, they are powerful and they're 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 blocking our utopia and notice how they always talk about democracy but when your elected representatives are blocking what they want to do all of a sudden now now the president has to go around congress he has to wage war without congress he has to impose obamacare without congress he has to stop the shutdown without congress etc now it's like we want a dictatorship because he's right a dictatorship of the proletariat amazing i want to come back the next hour and give the phone number out for veterans currently serving or uh, active duty, we can also be reserved for any questions for Stuart or any comments you want to make about how awake uh, the guardians of the Republic are. Uh, but I, I mean, I gotta tell you, it's very heartening to see the military really waking up. One special warfare uh, soldier told us he believed that in his unit, it was half. Others have said that's more like 75%. And even the rank and file, it's about 30% of your average infantryman now is paying attention to what's going on. And tell folks what a three percenter is. A three percenter is a hardcore gun owner who is not going to back off who is not going to comply with any more gun laws. And that, that movement started by Mike Vanderbo has grown and grown and grown. And in fact- um, A lot of military wears that patch now. Absolutely, you'll see, you'll see uh, outside the wire in Afghanistan, you'll see an Oath Keeper tab and also a three percenter tab. And we have an upcoming rally in, uh, down in at the Alamos coming up and this next weekend on the 19th is gonna be an open carry Texas rally. And we think we'll be at least 600 people will show up there with long arms. They had the police chief say he's going to arrest folks if they show up. Um, but now he's talking to the other side of his mouth saying he'll give a one day reprieve for this rally. So we'll see what happens. But regardless, we're going to be there. But again, there's no law there. We checked it. We yeah. talked to the land commissioner. It's lawful. Yeah. Uh, so the police chief says he's going to break the law, and now he's starting to back off. Hopefully he'll back off. We don't want another Lexington or Concord to start, do we? Or Alamo. We'll be right back. Right. Stay there. we got to go to break. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, the toll-free number of your active duty military and want to talk to Stuart Rhodes, have a question, a comment, or want to give him some info, toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. We'll go to your calls coming up in the next segment and get more into that Alamo thing because uh, we talked to the land commissioner who said, look, it's number one, it's the law that you're allowed to have guns open carry, but number two, that's state property so they can have their guns on the Alamo. And he's the land commissioner and it's over that and the police chief is like going back and forth, but it just shows how out of control things are. Jakari Jackson did an interview with him and aired the other night. We should probably air that. We'll air that tomorrow. David Knight's doing the, the radio show tomorrow. So I, I wanna air that land commissioner interview because it's a big deal tomorrow and some of the special reports when David Knight's here. But Stuart, getting into what you're saying behind the scenes about Oath Keepers is decentralized, perfectly designed, just like the founders, to be ideas. Those are bulletproof. They can come after you, but they can't shut down the signal. Well, we want our guys to form these teams as a working model and then to go out there and also as training cadre. But it's not that we want everyone to join Oath Keepers to form a team. We want our guys to lead by example and help others form their own teams in neighborhood watches, in veterans halls, in churches. Just you can even have to even talk to us. Just go on our website. We'll post all the information about how to do it, all the SOPs or make it recommended equipment lists, things like that, and training goals, and just run with it. If you want our advice, contact us and we'll help you out. We'll help you do it. That way it's decentralized. It's from the people themselves ground up. It's not some select group of warriors. Explain the A-team model. Well, the A-team model is from the Special Forces A-team where you have two specialists in each category on the team, like two medics, two communications experts, two engineers, which, is, which are things you need out there in the field. So if one is hurt or, or killed, you still have another one. And what we're doing is saying- Force multiplication. You bet. And, but their main goal, SS main mission is not direct action. It's to go out there and teach. To go out and teach other people how to take care of themselves and how to throw, overthrow the oppressor. You know, the oppressor Liber. So we're taking that model and saying, we want to apply the same model and adapt it to our communities. What do we need in every, every town and neighborhood? You cannot improvise communications. Either you got it or you don't. Either you got radios or you don't. You can, it's really difficult to, to improvise medical care. And same goes for emergency power, like, like generators and solar power. Either you got it or you don't. So put those critical things in place and a security element to protect them, and that's the nucleus. So even if your neighbors are asleep and not paying attention now, when the crap hits the fan, you are there as a unit ready to lead them.
Most guys got guns, especially here in Texas or rural, rural Montana, other parts of the country. They have firearms, but they don't have those other critical infrastructure elements. So put those in place. And, and notice the globalists have done everything they can to phase that out because they understand that's key. If, if, if you're not self-sufficient, you're domesticated, they win. And I studied you know, basic history and ran into the French resistance model and then, and then some of the northern European models of total resistance, read the book Total Resistance out of a lot of that, well, out of the founders, you know, uh, the A-team model. I've used that in information warfare with the truth just to try to get others out there as citizen reporters to then teach others you can't kill Alex Jones and shut down the info war now. Right. doesn't work. And remember that the founding fathers in their wisdom used both very open public organizing and their secret Sons of Liberty organization. They had public militias and town hall meetings, but they also had the Sons of Liberty. We're saying do both. Be very open and public about organizing sheriff posse behind a good sheriff, organizing neighborhood watches, getting all your veterans, your local VFW to stand up together. I mean, you're already on a list, guys. If you're a veteran... Have a public world. operation in face and then have your secret sure. operation. If you've got, you know, you should have uh, plan A, B, and C for your family. That should be private. That's need-to-know basis only. I don't want to know where your, where your safe houses are or where your, your second place to go. Because that's a cell method as well. Right. Stuff that's individual, you know that. Stuff that's group, that's group. You bet. That way you can't grab one person and then learn the whole operation. And the, and the advantage to doing the very public organizing is think about this. What did Solzhenitsyn tell us? The mistake they made in, in the Soviet Union is they all were isolated by themselves, hoping the secret police did not come to their door, and they, were, they, were, they did not have any mutual aid or mutual self-defense. If you have an organized community, it's much less likely the secret police will be able to get away with it, come into your house. Bottom line, we're going to teach people how to take care of themselves and then resist. And when we come back, that's why the federally run Southern Poverty Law Center is so scared now. We're going to explain the warning they're putting out when we come back. And they should be concerned. The globalists are a criminal takeover arm. We are rightfully resisting it, and we are hoping for peace. I can't help it. I can't sell out. I can't give in. It didn't end me. And I could feel, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I could feel the Sons of Liberty rising yet again. Stuart Rhodes is our guest. I want to go to your phone calls. Pete, John, Woody, Renee, Chad, and others. We're taking calls from current military or folks that have family in the military. Any questions or comments for Stuart Rhodes, founder and the head of Oath Keepers, oathkeepers.org. Very important to support those folks. And it's so good to know Stuart, know he's a for real organization and has weathered all the attacks because he set up the operation as informational and decentralized exactly as InfoWars has done. Just studying basic history and resistance against Soviets and the Nazis. That's what I did. I knew it was coming 20 years ago. I studied how they were countered. I'm here to counter them. I'm here to take action. I need you to join me. And we've done that together. And it, it is exciting to know that we have the initiative. They took over the Federal Reserve. They set up the systems. They're in control with unlimited blood supply, as you said. But we have the right and if we're on the side of good, and if we continue to point that out, it's over for them. Stuart, breaking news at DrudgeReport.com. This is in the news articles that are coming out. White House and IRS exchange confidential taxpayer info. Now, that's been known for a while, but now it's coming out. The White House tried to deny it. Again, this is beyond Nixon. And now under Obamacare, it gives them all your medical data. I mean, how much of this will we put up with? But you were talking about during the break letting the illegals come and protest but arresting veterans if they uh, try to go see the World War II memorials. Now they're shutting down most of Arlington Cemetery, knowing people were pre-booked to go visit their loved ones. What's next? The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier will be unguarded for the first time in its history? So who knows? I mean, but the more they do this, actually I think it's great because they're just, they're just showing everyone how absurd it is and how Orwellian they've become. The mask is coming off, and through their own arrogance, they don't realize what they're doing. I want them to piss off every American veteran and every active duty military. The more they act like jackasses towards the military and the veterans, the better. But you went to Yale you, as a law student and as a graduate and, and rubbed elbows with these guys. They don't understand the military culture. They are arrogant. I mean, they really think they're all powerful. They do not understand the military. They do not understand where they come from. They don't understand traditional Americans. It's like they're they're autistic. They're brilliant on paper and, and you know, in, in certain ways. But when it comes to common sense, they they don't have it. They do not have it, and they're blind to what they're doing. Why, at multiple parks, would they uh, lock people down in the hotel, say you can't leave for days, pull guns on foreigners pulling up in buses to see the, you know, to see Yosemite or, or, or Yellowstone? I mean, it's they're crazy on their power trip.
Yeah, well, they're trying to, to you know, magnify and amplify the, the shutdown to say, oh, look how horrible it is. But they're, what they're really doing is pissing people off. People know it's 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 bull. They're now they giving tickets nonsense. to people that show up at the Grand Canyon. That's CBS News. Right, and so folks know it's nonsense. So the more they do this, we are... If they keep acting like this, we will reach the 90% that they had in East Germany who are aware of how illegitimate and evil the regime was. I hope they keep doing this. I hope the Senate signs that ridiculous UN treaty. I mean, the more they do this, the easier it is for us to wake people up. It's becoming easier and easier. We've had guys who two years ago wouldn't listen to us in a veterans hall walking up to us now and apologizing, saying, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. You were right. And now they're ready to take action. So the more they do this, the easier it is for us to wake people up. But we have to make sure that they actually do something rather than just look around and go, this is bad. Well, look at how seven Obama czars have, have said they love Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in history. I mean, these people, and when you listen to them talk, they can barely talk and they're all crusty looking and weird and, and, and just corrupt, but everybody just follows their orders. I mean, these are really a bunch of freaks. Well, everybody in their circle, that's why they, 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 they only see the reflection of their own echo chamber. And so they think that everyone will do what they're told. They believe, like, like Kissinger said, that all the military are just useless, dumb animals to do what they're told. But we know different. And we know from history that that's not the way it's going to go. Well, here's the difference. They may get poor people and all the rest of it, but a lot of folks join because of family and history of the military. And there's a few joins they like to kill people. But overall, they're great folks. And I've learned out of anybody in the culture, the reason the system hates military vets is they've had to live in the real world. They know the government lies to them. They know they're given bad vaccines. They know they get financially lied to and cheated. They know the corrupt stuff that goes on. And they have been in the real world and are not afraid to fight back. And so, of course, these ivory-towered cowards are, hate them. They hate anybody that's real, anybody that's experienced anything. They're scared of you. And they're not eunuchs. And they're not Eloy for the Molochs. They are people with courage. And as you said earlier, what they want is a hyper-militarized, hyper-masculine state. And they want a sheeple. And the only other people in society they want to have that are, you know, masculine or able to take care of themselves would be the, be the hyper-criminals. So but that the military does, and all the veterans, is throws a monkey wrench in that. They are not emaciated. They are not sheeple. These are people who are, can think for themselves and act on their own when they know what's right and they have courage. The most bottom line essential thing you must have is courage, as Aristotle said. Courage is the first virtue because without courage, knowledge, wisdom doesn't matter. If you don't have courage, you will submit to all new tyrannies and make excuses for it right. until we have the video of Austin yesterday, 14 out of 20, signed a petition to make everyone wear helmets when they leave their house. Absolutely. So courage is the first virtue. And we have that. But what they will do, what they can do, is what they did during Katrina. When you have a disaster, that was the, that was the test. In Katrina, because they were, it was seen as a real emergency by the troops, you had active duty military obeying orders to go and confiscate firearms. Part out of ignorance, but also because they perceived it as a real emergency. That's why it's critical for folks to get squared away in their communities so it's no longer a real emergency. They remove the pretext. You can weather any storm on your own. You don't need martial law to make you safe. Well, plus, it did backfire. They passed a law saying the feds can't do that. There right. was already laws on the books. You, but you, you later learned there were units that did actually stand down and say no. There were some. Yeah. Yes, but the but, point is, it wasn't about stopping looters. That was the police mainly. It was actually going into the rich areas and stealing their guns. Right. And so the, the point is, though, it's a reflection of human nature that the more dire the emergency, the more unprepared the people, the more likely it is that the military and police will obey the orders. And the more likely your neighbors will submit to it because they want the food. They feel they feel dead. So it's essential to learn how to skin a buck, run a trot line, have storable food, firearms, and communications, and That's know right. your neighbors. A country boy can't survive. That's right. And an American can't survive. Be a real American. A real American doesn't sit on the couch. Because you can't bombs. starve them out and you can't make them run? That's right. That's the answer. Can't starve us out, can't make us run. That's it. You want security and you want food security, physical security to defend yourselves and each other. This was the, this was the founders' model. They grew their own food. They were independent farmers. They were all in the militia. You could not use the militia to oppress the people. And they'd all been in a bunch of real wars, so you couldn't push them around. Right. They, they'd fought the French and Indians on the frontier for hundreds of years. That is who King George pissed off. It wasn't the, the, wasn't the Boston merchants who were dangerous. It was the folks out in the countryside who were far more radical than even the Bostonians were. 
They had no idea what they were doing. They thought they were dealing only with Sam Adams and, and, and John Hancock, a rich merchant. They thought they were a pain in the neck. Then when they pissed off the townspeople out in the rural areas by banning town hall meetings, that's when they really woke the sleeping giant up. And the same thing's going to happen here in this country. You know, it's not what you and I say. It's the guy down the road who's been a, a World War II vet, a Korean War veteran, Vietnam vet. His whole family's been military. He was a veteran. That's the guy. And when he pulls up at a checkpoint where they're taking guns, all bets are off. And pretty soon there won't be any more of those checkpoints. Yeah, that's right. So there's, there's, and if he organizes with all the other veterans and all the other gun owners in his county in particular, and then get behind a good sheriff with a posse behind a sheriff, it can't be done. That, and that, under those circumstances, the TSA uh, Viper squads won't be able to do anything. Tell us about the Southern Poverty Law Center now. They're, they're calling you the fifth column. Well, in their comments, they have some readers saying we're a fifth column and we're, gonna, we're plotting to take over. Um, but, of course, the absurdity of that is, is what we want is we want every American. We want America and the Republic back. They've taken over. Exactly. And we want every American to be trained. We don't want us to be the warrior class. That's not, that's not, I don't want that. No, that's the opposite. You're the opposite of them. Exactly. They want to be the commissars and everybody else is puling slaves. They want the hyper warrior class to be under their control only. And as you said, they're the commissars. What they don't want is they don't want independent, resilient Americans who raise their own children, who grow their own food, who have their own raw milk. They don't want that. Who take care of their own security. You know what's amazing? I'm going to skip this network break so we can get all these calls before our next guest comes up. I'm going to have you with us as well when Tosh Chumley, uh, Plumley joins us said Chumley, thinking of the guy from Pawn Stars. My kids like to watch that show. The point is, is that you can feel the history happening. I mean, this is not a game. And now I've, I've always known they were tyrants, but now I realize they're really the worst brand. I mean, we're really dealing with evil, and it's almost empowering to know we've been right and to know that nothing's going to stop these trains going together. This is the way it is. Yeah. And, and I'm just honored to be alive in a generation that gets to be in the real fight to decide the whole next cycle of human development, because yep. this is it. Yep. Embrace the suck. Recognize your place in history. You were born here at this time as an American for a reason, and it's not to live on your knees. It's, it's not to have Google glasses and be a trendy and dance around and, and you know, die young from fluoride. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's not just to watch TV and NFL all day. Right. I mean, that's not what this is about. Or take your chains, leave your children in chains. So it's time for us to realize our place in history and, and embrace it. You know? What do you think of the Austinites signing a petition for Obama uh, that everyone have to wear a helmet when they walk down the street? That's not real Texas. I don't know what that is, but that ain't Texas. So that's Austin. Well, th it, Austin doesn't have voting. We've proven it's fraudulent and run by a criminal group. I mean, I had it certified at the state level, and they said that doesn't matter. Right. But no, th these are the trendies in the UT sector, and they believe they run the city. Uh, but it's true that right outside Austin, people would laugh at you about this. But I'm telling you, I don't know what you call these people. I mean, it, it Eloy. is. They're Eloy. Describe the Eloy and the Morlocks. Right, from the time machine. They were the Eloy who were, were basically food for the Morlocks. They were, they were raised to be cattle. And they were submissive, uh, subservient, did not even help each other out, and didn't know how to resist. That's what these people are. They're willing, or they're, they're self, um, self-actualized Eloy. They turn themselves into Eloy. And they think it's a virtue. Like, if you really talk to them later, they'll admit they know it's wrong. They go, does it matter? I'm on the winning team. If I submit, I will succeed. And it's like, no, that it, it isn't working like that. Yeah, they love Big Brother. So, but as I said earlier, they're useful idiots. In the end, the powers that be don't care about them either. Briefly, the Alamo situation coming up, and then we're going to go to the calls. Well, we had a, a march in uh, Temple, Texas for open carry in, su in support of the active duty soldier who was detained while he was open carrying out with his son, uh, Mr. Grisham, Sergeant Grisham. You just had dinner with him, didn't you? Uh, we, we missed dinner, unfortunately, but probably tonight. But we, were, we went there. It was open carry of Texas, put the march on, and Oath Keepers supported it. So we were there for that one, and we're going to the one next weekend on the 19th at the Alamo. Same thing. Open carry of a long arm in Texas is legal. And what is the better place to go but, but at the Alamo? The whole issue there was the refusal to submit, the refusal to, to turn in their guns. And as you see right here in this coffee cup, you've got, you've got Colonel Travis saying, victory or death, I shall never surrender or retreat. And that's the mindset we have to have as Americans. So we're going there to honor Americans from Lexington Green through the Alamo who have taken the same stand. And in that same spirit, take our, st our stand and draw our line in the sand and say, we are not going to submit to being disarmed. And by the way, he knew five, six, seven thousand soldiers were coming for their 180 something. Why did they make the decision to do that? Because they've been ordered to go down there. They were committed to it. And 
they were men of destiny. We need to become men of destiny again. They knew that they were going to light the fire that would lead to the independence of the Republic of Texas, and they did. They knew it, and they were willing to pay that price. Sometimes it's worth paying the price. That's completely different from the, to. they are the diametrically the opposite of those trendies. 180 degrees. Right, absolutely. The trendies and the, their, their view is anything to save my skin, to preserve my safety, all that matters is me. And for, for men like this, Minnesota Lexington, the men who assaulted the beaches at Iwo Jima and at Normandy, it was exactly the opposite. They were throwing themselves on the front lines to save their country and they believed to fight for freedom. Not always. That's how it's gone throughout history. And that's why the enemy demonizes the patriots, because they know we are the threat to their total takeover. Right. Of our children, everything. Unbelievable. Well, uh, let's go to Renee in Louisiana, then Chad, Woody, John, and Pete. Thanks for holding. Renee, you're on the air from Louisiana. You're a Marine. Go ahead. You're on the air. Renee, go ahead. Okay, put Renee on hold or let them go. Let's go to uh, Woody. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air, Woody. Yes, hi, Alex. How are you today? I'm fine. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Rose, I read your uh, your call, basically what sounds like a call to arms in America, and retired law enforcement with, with family in the military, and my oldest son, who did a tour in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, he's now out of the service. Don't you think with the NSA spying apparatus and the uh, police state that's now in place that if Oath Keepers does organize like this, that they'll be the first ones to be targeted, to be, you know, subjects under the National Defense Authorization Act? Yeah, potentially. But I think by then it's too late. We'll have spread the good virus. So we want our guys to go out there. They're already on a list. If you're an Oath Keeper member, you're on a list already. So why not go out and replicate yourself? The enemy putting patriots on list shows they're an occupying enemy. Right. This is not the government. But the utility of it is, is I want to go replicate my skills with somebody else. If I'm afraid to go teach another American what I know how to do, which was reconnaissance patrolling, or whatever your MOS was, if you're afraid to do that, they win. You don't pass on those skills. You don't organize your fellow Americans. See yourself, if you want to see yourself as being on a, like a kamikaze mission, that's, that's fine too. No, no, you're a seed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sending, I'm going out there to plant the seed as a, like, like an SF-18. They might be rounded up and killed, but, but by the time that happens, they'll have already organized the population. It's already too late to stop. Plus, more than even training people, you're teaching them that they can resist. Well, sure. Once people start thinking of that, they're going to figure out their ways as well. And you're not going to have security. Look, look, guys, a secret cell structure is not going to stop the secret police from getting you in the middle of the night. But if you organize your entire neighborhood and all the veterans in your town, now the secret police can no longer... Well, by the way, I mean, I'm no military guy, but I've studied it. If they start rounding people up, you don't wait in your houses. You go out. Right. Then the defense is offense. You're not. You're not. You home. go on the offense the minute they start rounding people up. So in the worst case, I mean, look, here, th just to back up a second, this is what Americans are supposed to be doing anyway. The founders told us that we have a responsibility to take our protection and our national security in our own hands as a militia. That's why it says in the Second Amendment it's necessary for the security of a free state. You will not be free and you will not be secure without it. A secret cell structure is not going to help you when looters come rolling over your, your house and, 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 and burn you out and kill you. A secret cell is also not going to stop the secret police. So it does not provide for neighborhood security. It does not provide for your neighbors to be secure so they don't. The answer is we're the good guys. We're out in the open. We're the Americans against the occupier. Well, even if, but even if you're, you're talking about a worst-case scenario, but the utility of it is, as, as the founders did with the, with the open militias, is it forces them to try to bring out the standing army. And that's and why the, the open force. carry is so important, because they'd already taught people guns were illegal. The average idiot thinks they're illegal. The open carry lets them know, no, it's okay to have guns, and now the guns are back in the racks of the pickup trucks again. Right. We're now, this is true civil rights movement. God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go to Chad in Minnesota. You're on the air, Afghan vet. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Alex. I uh, appreciate everything you guys are doing. I just want to let you know, you know, I, we need our country back. That's for sure. This is just ridiculous. Um, things are out of hand. I'm an 11 Bravo infantry soldier. I was over in Afghanistan, and things are just out of hand. It's just ridiculous. Um, well, that's the key. The globalists aren't going to just back off either. They're not going to move slow anymore. They know we're winning the info war. They're trying to move it into the next phase. Go ahead. And I, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm not, I'm not going to sit back and stand, you know, stand for it. If they want to come to my, 
my door and take my weapon, they can take it off a pile of brass and my dead body afterwards. So, you know, it's completely fine with me. I'll, I'll rally all my friends and neighbors. And I was born, you know, and, and raised by my father, who was a jack of all trades, because I tell you what, our biggest problem in this country is everybody only knows one thing. That's what you were saying to me last night, uh, uh, Stuart, is the key is that we all need to be generalists. We need to have full spectrum understanding of basics. Every American should be have light infantry skills, and, and you could specialize in one thing like an on SF-18, but then you should cross-train. He's right. You should be able to take care of yourself and your family. As, as Highland said, specialization is for insects. Yep. I was an Eagle Scout, and we were raised through, you know, going through the woods, knowing how to take care of yourself. Right. We go hunting. We go fishing. Right. If it comes down to it, we can survive, you know, and that's the biggest thing. But most people are too afraid. Pass those, pass those skills on. Their lives. And they just want to sit there and watch their TV and watch yeah, their Yeah, they Super think Bowl. being wimpy, it, it protects them when it's the opposite. It's, right. it's just, it's, it's totally backwards. And pass those skills on. And like I said before, the founders used both. They used very public organization, and they also had the Sons of Liberty. It's a yin and yang thing. Use them both. But don't fool yourself into thinking, you guys out there, that by being silent and waiting for the day that you're getting things done. Organize right now. Get your That's right. If you won't get involved in the info war, you'll never physically fight. I know some guys who are off the radar because they're combat vets, and that's a, that's a different ball game. You know, but if you're not, unless you're one of them, then you better be doing something very publicly. We need everybody to be public. I, we need people to get aggressive right now. Right. But that's the only thing that's going to save us is backing these crooks off because they're watching. They're testing. And, and, and if we fail the test, they're going to blow stuff up and blame it on us. They're going to come after us, and all hell's going to break loose. And by the way, the police out there. I'm not spoiling for some fight. Me and my kids aren't going to one of your dungeons. And let me explain something. You don't want to be in this civil war. The globalists plan to wipe you out in the first year of this war. That, that is the plan, is to have us kill each other. So we need to get that message out to police. Do not go out and round up people for their political views. All right, your, your children are going to be either free or slaves also. They're not going to be exempt. So the police out there definitely need to choose sides. You need to choose, you know, who, who do you serve? Do you serve the Constitution, the American people, or do you serve the destroyers? Make Let's talk to it. Pete in New York. Uh, let's uh, Go ahead, Pete. Got about a minute and a half. Hey, Alex. Hey, Stuart. How you guys doing today? Good, sir. Go ahead. Hey, Stuart. I had the pleasure of meeting you this past April. I drove up from Long Island All right. to renew my oath. Um, I met you. I had the pleasure of meeting Franklin Shook. I sat down at a picnic table, and um, I guess it was Springfield, because we drove from Lexington to Springfield yep. to renew the oath. And I had the pleasure of shaking your hand and, and talking with you for a little while. Let me tell you, I'm such a such a proud member of Oath Keepers. Well, thanks, and man. Well, God bless you, brother. About this. Yeah, I'm very excited about this special civilization preservation team program that's going to be uh, going forward real soon. And I'm going to a New York meeting in another week or two. Good. And I just wanted to say that the spirit of 1776 is rising. We are not going to take it anymore, and we are going to go into action. You got it. Good. Good. We better warn everybody. Get the word out. Stuart, stay there. We got Tosh Plumley coming on. Good. And I'll recap who he is, and he's now had the DOD. In fact, will you print me, uh, guys, uh, Julie Wilson's article about it so I have those points? Uh, he's now had the DOD contact him and say, how do you know all this? Dealing with Benghazi. So stay with us, Stuart, and ride shotgun. Good to go. Look, I'll be honest with everybody, and I've said this many times, but it's important people understand this. Just from my perspective, constantly living this, studying it, going through all the stuff that happens behind the scenes, dealing with this and watching the political process unfold over 20 years of political action, 18 years on air. And immersing myself in historical research as well, not just contemporary research. I would not be fighting this as hard and being as prominent and aggressive if we were dealing with the boss hog corruption of, say, like a Harry Truman, where there's just some bid rigging and robbing going on and things like that, the globalists are fundamentally trying to shut down freedom, shut down the family, dumb people down. They're fundamentally trying to wreck prosperity. They're fundamentally on record doing this to make us impoverished for social assimilation into a collectivist, eugenics-based, Planned Parenthood nightmare. And you can argue and go, well, look at the dumbed-down public. We need to, to get rid of these dumb people. But they've helped accentuate that. And, and they're targeting the most intelligent people. They're targeting leadership males. The government documents have come out that are talking of high test scores with the drugging in schools. Th this is a military program by the globalist. 
So the military is now, because they have some military training, is going, wait, this is a military operation. And wait, we're targeted when we get out? They're understanding that there's no making a deal with this. It'd be like if aliens were 50 light years out and we're going to get here in 20 years or whatever. They had warp speed. And when they get here, they're going to destroy Earth. And we have their plans. I'm not going to like try to make a deal with them when they get here. There, that's the analogy. There's no making a deal with the New World Order. There's no, all right, I'll kind of resist it culturally and try to make it better. And, you know, I wouldn't be 110% all in, just committed, really trying to be front and center on their radar, just begging for them to come after me if I realize there's no future if we don't anyways. But it's also very liberating to admit how much trouble we're in because then all you can do is get ready and deal with it and fight it as hard as you can. That's what life's all about. We're meant to prevail. We're meant to survive. Victory is just survival, folks. And the globalists understand that. They want the whole future, everything for themselves. We're going to go back to your calls, uh, Renee and John and Lee and Al and Bill and everybody. We only got him on for about 10 minutes just to get an update. I appreciate him coming on. Headline from Julie Wilson up on Infowars.com. Former CIA whistleblower targeted by government for Facebook post. Whistleblower calls out government Facebook post, gets threatened by the DOJ. Now, that's the Department of Justice, and I guess that's via the DOD. And the point is, is that Tosh Plumley is a famous whistleblower from uh, back in the church hearings in 77, on record, and the Iran-Contra hearings. But he's still, at 76 years old, the only job he has is a contractor. He's a famous contractor, flew guns to Castro when he was working for the U.S., then flew guns in after him. Bay of Pigs, you name it, all of it. For those that don't know history, he, he's a famous guy. Folks don't know who Chuck Yeager is or Audie Murphy. Now. <laughs> That's just amazing. But the point is, is that he lived it. He came on our show, said they're going to come after me probably, but I talked to a high-level NATO source and others. It wasn't just the Libyan arms they were covering up to al-Qaeda with the ambassador from Turkey to Syria. It was in the legal export, but illegal to Al-Qaeda, out of the State Department giving him actual modern stingers. He's got the DOJ saying, how do you know that? And so uh, he's going to give us an update on what he's dealing with right now, what's happening as a contractor, a mercenary in his own words. But he's not a mercenary because, you know, he's, he's got these contacts. He's risking his life to do this. And as Jim Garrison said, you got to be in the spotlight or get dead. He's also here because once he learned all this, he had to go public or he had a better chance of being killed. And from my research, I hadn't been around in the 50s like he was, but in my years of dealing with this stuff, he's absolutely right. So we'll get Stuart Rhodes' take on that in a moment as well. But uh, Tosh Plumley, we appreciate your courage. Uh, tell, us, tell us what you're going through, what's happened, uh, and the repercussions you've had from coming on the broadcast. Okay, well, well thank you, Alex. I appreciate you. You're awesome to come back on. I hope I can recap this for you in a way where your listeners can understand it. Uh, back in 209, friends of mine, uh, military, a uh, uh, high-ranking uh, officer, was involved with the task force out in Mexico, training out the Mexican Marinos to go in and um, uh, track down um, cartel members and um, uh, put a stop to some of those activities. Uh, that was an article that was done called Boots on the Ground by Bill Connell and Narco News. Uh, that went from 209. The Fast and Furious thing got caught up in it. Uh, we began to find out weapons that were coming legally, not illegally, but legally from the direct commercial sales program were showing up in crime scenes in Mexico. Um, these were not always coming from um, uh, mom-and-pop uh, gun stores. These were anti-aircraft guns, Stinger missiles, RPGs. I went in with the task force down there and the Marinos with Task Force 7 um, and photographed some of these um, weapons, reported back to proper authorities what we were finding, and we got stonewalled. Um, so the reason that I was contacted down there is because there was a leak that was causing the Task Force 7 members of that crew working inside Mexico. The cartel was finding out information that they were actually training out, and they were coming after them gunning similar to a situation that happened with Kiki Camarena in 1985. This has been an ongoing operation for, gosh, a number of years. So, like I said earlier in one of your broadcasts, uh, they take it off the shelf, tweak it a little bit, dust it off, put it back out in, in an operation. I'll speed up here a little bit. So then my friend down there, two others, they 
got transferred over to Afghanistan. Uh, military intelligence unit over there began working with the NATO force. The NATO began to, uh, NATO, the particular NATO force over there began to find numerous weapons that were coming from stockpiles from the direct commercial sales program into uh, Jordan, Turkey, Pakistan, uh, and those were going into what they referred to as safe houses that were being uh, run by uh, elements or organizations within the CIA. Um, I think that has become public uh, now. Those weapons that were found uh, by there, but, well, let me get back here. The NATO guy relayed that information to my contact. My contact told me he said, hey, the direct commercial sales program is sending weapons over to CIA safe houses, and they're being dispersed to factions within the Syrian rebels. Now, it's been reported that we're running to the Syrian rebels. The Syrian rebels are so interspersed with so many organizations and infiltrated, they're very poor. So these weapons, we lost monitor. We, we could not monitor them. Blue Lantern Report is supposed to monitor these weapons, uh, tracking devices, things like that, to find out where they were going. All right. Then, about a year later after that, these weapons began to show up in these factions that these rebels had. They were U.S.-made weapons. They were high-impact weapons. There were some RPGs, um, M-16, uh, which are not really high-impact, but uh, any aircraft, uh, all kinds of different, uh, 105 Hauser shells, uh, 75 millimeters, armor-piercing uh, stuff. These things were scattered to very safe houses in Jordan, uh, Gutter, uh, and uh, Pakistan and Turkey. Uh, then when we had the attack on the embassy, some of these groups that were supposed to be protecting that in embassy was told to stand down a national security matter. As a result of that, the attack, and we lost an ambassador. I would have probably never got into this except I heard a plea from one of the mothers of one of these men that was killed there in Benghazi. All she was doing was begging our government to tell her what happened. And Tosh, you've told that story. You're telling folks why you did this. You know, coming uh, out of relative obscurity since 1991, the last time you testified to Congress uh, on round two of Iran Contra to, to, to tell this and risk your life uh, and uh, expose what your NATO source to recap. You know, said, no, the word is they had the ambassador basically killed. The stand down was deliberate. And a lot of that's come out. My sources say that as well. You just talked directly to the NATO source and other Pentagon sources, as you said, military sources, high level that confirmed it. Now you've, uh, is it accurate? Because I've got your statements from Facebook. Tell us about the repercussions you got, because we know they go after whistleblowers that expose their crimes. Okay. What's happening? Right. Okay. Now we'll start up in here. So then what I thought I could do for my friend in there, he said, well, what can you do? And I said, well, I'll contact various people that I do know and see if we can get the story out. So I thought we could hit mainstream media, and then, bam, so I immediately got shut down. That sort of alarmed me a little bit, so I said, okay, I'm going to go out. That's right. You did interviews with story. Fox News and others, and none of it aired. Not, not as yet. And I understand that there's a, uh, some uh, little problems that they're having about airing this particular story. I was about to so say, so you've done that interview, but they haven't aired it. Go ahead. Right, right. So I thought, well, the only thing that's going to protect me is get this information out there before the fact. So I began to say, okay, here's the story. This, answer these questions that I have uh, for the sake of Mrs. Smith, answer the questions of what happened to her son. Why is there, why is there in my opinion, a cover-up? The only reason that I feel that there's a cover-up is because of the weapons that were shipped legally through the direct commercial sales that were getting pilfered into rebels' hands and being used against our troops. Sure, and now Obama so signed an order saying he's allowed to arm terrorists, but it's retroactive. It still doesn't hold water. So what's the DOJ? What are they saying to you? Well, all right. They were supposed to come out here, and we're going to have a sort of a top level, well, not a top level. We're going to have a meeting about this at Peterson Air Force Base sometime around the 20, I think it was the 23rd, 24th, somewhere around there. Um, and then as a result of me going to the public releasing the story, they called off that meeting. Uh, the meeting was going to be uh, a preliminary meeting to talk to me about this uh, NATO source and also my colonel friend 
Uh, and uh, I was uh, told that uh, I would be called back. This was a preliminary meeting, and I'd probably be called back to D.C. to testify to what I said publicly. Sure, they always uh, say that, though. You know, I mean, you're smarter than I am. You've been through this. They're trying to find out well, who the sources are. Well, that's exactly what. I'd already gone through that with the Fast and Furious situation, and then also back in some earlier stuff where I got gagged. Because they threatened me after I testified. Sure, so you called Jim Mars, he got a hold of me, so you could get this right. out before they gagged you. So what's the latest? All right, well, the latest was, then they come in and tell me that uh, uh, they're taking the, what I have said and turn that over to the DOJ and the Homeland Security and State Department for a possible investigation of releasing uh, national security matters. Uh, hell, I'm not even a, uh, an employee of the federal government. I'm not privy to top secret information, but I did have a leak that leaked some information to me. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, here's the deal. You knew what was going on. We all know. These are criminals wow. that murdered him to cover up their Al-Qaeda arming, and now they're coming to threaten you with the same Justice Department that ran Fast and Furious and that runs all the narcotics well, and the little kids and everything else, and the mafia is mad you're exposing them. You're, the mafia is well, mad you're not a total coward. Well, okay, so I'm looking for, um, you know, I'm telling you the story. I mean, so. As a result, the meeting was canceled because it was already public, and they said to me that they're going to turn this over for an investigation, and they wanted to know my sources. And I said, well, I'm a journalist. I'm not going to divulge my sources. And this is the quote. Sir, we will see about that. To me, I considered that as a threat. And then I immediately I called my friend Jim Mars. He advised me to get back in touch with you, get it out public before the facts, that you've been threatened. I take it as a threat. Now, they want to tell me to tell them who my sources are in NATO and who my sources are in the U.S. military. I refuse to do that. So now, are they going to try to make me a Bradley Manning and a Snowden or a cross-breed between the two? I'm not a government employee. I'm Here, here's the deal. They're, they're at war with the press. And if they blow your car up or they say you commit suicide or they blow my car up, we were killed, period. And, hey, it's not like we're stupid with these guys. You knew what you were doing. I know. We all know. We're all in. They hate that, too. I mean, Tosh, you knew this, but this shows they're really, really scared. We've got the head of Oath Keepers uh, here with us, constitutional uh, lawyer, Ron Paul uh, advisor, folks that just joined us, Stuart Rhodes, OathKeepers.org. What's your take on what you're hearing here? Well, Mr. Plumley is doing exactly what needs to be done, and hats off to him for being a whistleblower. This is exactly what has to happen. Those who have knowledge of what's going on need to expose it, and, and he's a hero, frankly. He's just, just as much a hero as Snowden, if not more so, since he's still in the United States. I would encourage him to contact Senator Rand Paul's office or one of the other patriots, maybe, maybe uh, Cruz, someone at the high levels of the U.S. government to go there and testify, go to their offices now, become one of their witnesses. That's what that's probably your best protection in the legal. That's right, because what people don't get, I want okay, you to continue now, with your. Now let me let me interject something here. That doesn't always work. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. fast, fast and furious. I went to Senator Grassley through uh, Donnelly and their aide, and I give them the complete picture, the right. background, the whole story about what that military crew, Task Force Seven, was doing down right. out of Fort Bliss, Texas, was doing down in Mexico. Right. They put me on ice. Right. Now I went out, not public to the media about that at first. Then I made contact to another media friend that I had named Narco News, who covered it, and also Salem News, who put me on as a journalist for my protection. Sure. They covered it. Now, I go out to see Ron Paul. I go out to see these fat cats sitting up in Washington, and I'm not mad at these people. I just want to get them off their butt and do something. Well, I mean, also, we're right. not the glittery Fox News or CNN, even though our audience are as big or bigger. I, when it's just, I it, don't. I'm not a conspiracy type person. I don't give a, a rat's butt about what the hell they do in Washington, D.C. As far as being a hero and a mercenary or, or a whistleblower, that's not my game in life. There is something going on here that the American people need to know about. Right. Tosh, I agree. You really sound energized now that they've threatened you. I went through proper channels. That did not work. I contacted mainstream media. That did not work. Now, you've asked me to come back on this program for the third time. There is a series of questions that I have asked directly for Mrs. Smith. 
Why won't the State Department, the DOJ, Homeland Security, and the President of the United States answer those 11 questions that I've asked over two weeks ago? I want to get focused back on those issues. Sir, Tosh, stay there. Listen to me. I think you can hear me over the cell phone. Tosh, i got to say this. We're going to break here in a moment. This is a big deal. I mean, J Julie Wilson wrote the article. We've got you on about this. We're now in the same kettle of fish with you here. My whole issue is, is that our listeners need to understand, we drop bombshell after bombshell. People first heard about the Navy SEALs being murdered here. That's now come out and been confirmed. Okay, we first broke that. We break so much big stuff. Our listeners need to understand how serious this is. You're hearing the big Benghazi break right now and a Fast and Furious break. This guy's a famous whistleblower right here, right now. The DOJ's threatening him. They've already persecuted the press. We need to talk about what we do next. Stay there, Tosh. We're going to come back with Stuart Rhodes, constitutional lawyer. You're a constitutional lawyer, head of Oath Keepers. Maybe you need to take this guy on and take him up there with you to Washington and, and have a press conference because, again, they might try to whack this guy. I'm telling you, that's what they do. They're a bunch of killers. Well, he's doing the right thing. He's, he's doing both. Uh, I got Tosh Plumley during the break to tell me what's going on, and then he said I could say it on air. Um, he, he told the Senate Armed Services Committee all this info. And I knew this a few weeks ago, um, and they were, said they were going to take him up here and have him testify. Now they called him up and said, what you were given was illegal and what you did was illegal, and we want your sources in the Pentagon and in NATO. Uh, and he said, well, I'm a journalist. I don't have to give you that. And they said, we'll see about that. And that's a threat. Now they they got him under surveillance messing with him. And this is how they operate. I mean, they're there to just get the info to shut down. They all know they had Predator drones watching the whole deal. It was an order. Kill the ambassador, cover it up, to cover up giving the Stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda, which they'll probably use to blow up airplanes later and take our rights. I mean, you know, it's that simple. But it's all out there now. So, we, Stuart, you're a constitutional lawyer. This is a big deal. It is. And, and, and I agree with you. Yeah, he's contacting him behind the scenes. He needs to go have a press conference. He's done it here, but it shows how cowardly the media is. Not one person in that hour-long press conference would ask Obama about Obamacare yesterday. I mean, it, it, I mean, look at Infowars.com. Obama trendies want mandatory helmets for walking. 14 out of 20 Austinites think we should wear helmets. I mean, it, it's just servile cowards everywhere. And Tosh, you are a hero. In a world of cowards, standing up for what's right is heroic. I'm sorry. And it's easy to charge up a machine gun hill, studies have shown. It's harder all by yourself out there to go public against the whole power structure. So uh, your comments uh, uh, here, Stuart Rhodes, to Tosh Plumley. Well, he's, he's right to not trust politicians. Um, so I think he's right to do a, a dual-prong approach. Go to the media, make it as big as you can through any alternative media you possibly can do. But also do try to use someone like Rand Paul or Senator Cruz, who have bigger balls than Grassley, frankly. So go to someone like that. Don't count on it. But that's your best shot. And the more public you are, the safer you are. But they all know. I've talked to Pentagon people. I mean, we've had them on air, and then they get threatened and make me retract what they already said on air. Right. I mean, I knew a week after the whole deal. They set him up, they kill him, they got rid of him to give the missiles. And I mean, now he's just got it directly from another NATO person. He needs more documentation. As much as you can throw out there right now, so that's that's too it's too late for them to stop you, the better. I mean, obviously, they probably know the colonel he's talking to, and they know who the NATO guy is. They just want to try to have a chilling effect. But what if everybody goes public? Right. Uh, Tosh, make your points. I'm sorry I'm running on here. No, okay, that's no, no problem. This is, a, like I say, this is an own, uh, a project that's been put on the shelf. It was put on, okay, after Cuban days, then with our gun running operations, we financed both sides. We sent guns to Batista. We sent guns to Fidel Castro when they called him Castro Oil. Uh, back in the uh, the 50s, the late 50s, early 60s, back to the Bay of Pigs, guns going to both sides. We come all the way up into Cuba. Uh, Sir, Kansas, absolutely. Kansas, we know beyond. you've put that on record. It's historical. You've right. testified to Congress. Okay, so then they, then they push it off. Now, here, back to focus, back to where it started all this. I started these questions. Let's, do I have time? To, okay, I'm going to make a direct challenge on your broadcast yeah. to the senators that Stewart is trying to get me in contact with. To the mainstream media who will uh, dodge these questions, to the people that go to a press conference and ask the president of the United States questions, if they ask these kind of questions, they've been thrown out on their ear. Can I ask these questions on your program, log them before the fact, and ask them to give you direct answers to these questions? Yes, sir. we got to go to break here in a moment. We can come back and do those questions, but start getting into your direct questions now. 
My direct question is the United States uh, secretly arming and supporting various factions of the Syrian rebels with high caliber uh, impact weapons from the United States arsenal? Yes or no? Number two, is the United States' little known direct commercial sales program, also known as the Blue Lantern Report, being used as a cutout to secretly aid both sides of a Middle Eastern civil war? That's question number two, yes or no? Is America again playing both sides against the middle for corporate gain, as previously demonstrated by the Cuban project of the 50s and 60s, as well as the Iran Contra fiasco of the 80s? Tosh, stay the there. We're back in one minute. Infowars.com forward slash show over the video feed. Alex Jones. We've got uh, the head of Oath Keepers. Stuart Rhodes riding shotgun with us. We were just talking during the break who we could go to. Walter Jones in North Carolina, frequent guest here. We'll contact him. Uh, Justin Amash out of Michigan. He's really good. Rand Paul's just hard to get through his gatekeepers. Like I'd have to call Rand Paul at his home, his Kentucky house, to get him on if I wanted to. Never get through all his minions um, that are basically a bunch of daily caller people, which is fine. I don't even care. Uh, you know, I don't need to get him on my show. The point is, he, last time he came on, he called me and wanted to come on. Why don't I ever hear from you? Well, some Ron Paul called me a while back. Why haven't I heard from you? I was like, well, you're people, you know. Uh, but uh, that's a big part of the problem because the minions just want to go up. And even though their boss is good, if it's Rand Paul or Ted Cruz, you can't get to them. So uh, I think you ought to take Tosh Plumley up there and walk him into his office. Because Tosh, you know, really is the real deal. He's a famous whistleblower, still does contract work for these agencies as a civilian. Tosh, finish your points. I'm sorry. We've only got about four minutes left. Finish your points that you want to read out your challenge to the senators here on air. I don't, I don't really care about going to seeing any of those people up there. I've been up there to Washington six times, and out of six times, it, it has not got covered. It's been covered up, and the only thing that's happened is I've been threatened. Now, I'm going to go a seventh time, cover up behind closed doors, classified committee, top secret committee sensitive, and then get warning that if I discuss this with you or anybody else, Fox News or whoever they come out there, that I'm going to uh, uh, be going to jail for a release and uh a national, you know, matters of national security. I don't mean to ramble and, and go on. About no, no, it. I get it. There are a bunch of. Uh, no, no, no. I had rather, I had rather see the American people ask these questions. Right. In fact, everybody go should go to town place. halls and ask these questions so they can get them at your Facebook. They're in our article. Former CIA whistleblower targeted by government. Why don't For they ask them? Why don't they answer? Why don't they answer and give Miss Smith back? Let's focus back to what started me opening that Facebook page. Let's start back. So why I come on your program? Let's go back to what happened when I contacted Jim Mars, who helped me start all this. This free focus about, and these questions are very important. Mrs. Smith should be asking these questions. The American people should be asking these exactly. questions. Exactly. You've already done a lot of work. You've done it over and over again, and people need to get up off their hind ends and do it. So let's get into your last points. Well, they talk about, everybody talks about, and blasts their lips around the country, but nobody wants to go out on point. And attack, uh, and I, when, when I say attack, I don't mean rabble rouse and talk a bunch of bullshit out of your lips and your butt and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about facts. Is the United States little-known direct commercial sales program, also known as the Blue Lantern Report, being used as a cutout to secretly aid both sides of a Middle Eastern civil war? Yes or no, Mr. President, Mr. Senate, Mr. Whoever just heard this. Answer, yes or no. We want it on record. If you say no and we find out later, you lied to the American people. That's my goal. That's my aim. I'm very adamant about it. My whole life is hanging on what the hell happened on these questions. Now, why is it that these questions will not be answered for Mrs. Smith, who lost her son in Benghazi? and also the other people that lost loved ones and be gossip. I have another question. I'm full of questions. I'm a journalist. That's my job, to ask questions. Why can't these questions be asked in a press conference to the president? Why can't we get these people to answer these questions for the record? Yes or no? What happened to those weapons after legally being sold by this direct commercial program after they leave our control, are they monitored? How come our troops have to stand up and face these American weapons where in the hands of radical steering groups? 
That's a question. Absolutely. Tosh, we're out of time. I'm going to talk to you during the break here. But the questions are up on Infowars.com. They're up on your Facebook uh, as well. We're linked to that on Infowars.com. And I understand we need to all need to get these questions out and force them to answer them. And I want to also thank Stuart Rhodes for being here. Nightly news coming up tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Please pray for all whistleblowers like Mr. Plumley or, or journalists like Mr. Plumley and us.